It's uh, August 18th, 2021. Got to get the icon off my computer. Uh, the time now is 5.07. Meetings normally held at the municipal office are being held remotely with adequate alternate means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the Governor Baker's June 16th, 2021 Act extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, including the extension of the remote participation provisions of his March 20th, 2020 executive orders suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law uh, General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 20. Uh, the remote connection for this meeting uh, is the phone number is 312-626-6799. Meeting ID is 911-604-1580. The passcode is 570012. To get the Zoom login, uh, go to the Town of Deerfield website and uh, click on the agenda for tonight's meeting. And uh, you should be able to connect into the Zoom. Call this meeting to the order. You want to make yeah. the motion? Sure, I can make the motion. Um, so this is a motion for executive session. I move that the select board enter into executive session in accordance with the provisions of Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21. A3 to review, discuss, and consider the board's response to the American Civil Liberties Union's Foundation's July 22nd, 2021 letter regarding the board's public comment period, whereas discussion of this matter in open session would have a detrimental effect on the board's litigation litigating uh, position. And the chair so declares, or does the chair declare? Uh, I do. And to uh, reconvene in open session. Okay. I'll second that. Um, Any uh, further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Um, okay. Is Casey, you're going to meet oh, us, and, leave it to a side, side well, room? And we want to invite in uh, Lisa, Lisa Mead, Michael uh, Kennefect, uh, Jennifer Gannett, and Casey Warren. Yes. I won't be joining. I'll be okay. Um, All right. Thank you, Jennifer. Is Alex Castro going to join? Uh, let's see. I don't. I think so. Yeah. Okay. In fact, Michael can affect. No, Alex. Uh, what did you have? Um, well, Michael's in there. I was wondering okay. if Alex, Alex Castro also. No. No. Well, Casey had thought that he was coming. Oh, I, I, maybe I'm just not sure who it is. So he works for me. Oh, okay. Then yes, I just didn't know if that was just a general public. So, okay. Okay. So um, I sent you the link. You should be okay. able to go into the breakout room. Thank you. We'll join you back shortly. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Because of the bandwidth problem. There you have it. Okay. Well, then I'm going to call the meeting to order because we do have a. Um, are all three board members, Board of Health are here for Deerfield. Okay, so, so Carolyn, if I could just, um, the various school committees need to call to order as well. So yeah, if we yes. I'm gonna, break in, <laughs> go I'm ahead. Gonna call, I'm gonna call the order um, and, you know, say all the things that we have to say. And then I will convene our Board of Health and select board meeting. And then you, um, then I'm gonna have Sunderland, then Waitley, Conway, Boards of Health, um, convene theirs, and then Frontier, Conway, Deerfield, Sunderland, and Waitley School Committees. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Thank you um, for everyone for coming tonight. Uh, this is a joint meeting of the Deerfield Board of Health and Select Board, um, the Board of Health of Conway, Waitley, and Sunderland, as well as the Frontier Union 38 School Committees from all four towns and the Frontier. So um, welcome to this joint meeting. Um, this is uh, August 18th, 
2021 at 6 p.m. and the meeting will be held jointly. The remote meeting connection is a dial-in number 312-626-6799 or 929-205-6099 or 833-548-0276. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580. The passcode is 570012. Um, all meeting uh, attendees should mute their phones. That's star six for landlines and less speaking. All attendees should wait to speak until introduced. The Board of Selectmen and the Board of Health in Deerfield does convene their meeting. Now I will ask the Sunderland Board of Health to convene their meeting. Good evening, uh, this is Caitlin Rock. I'm the chair of the Sunderland Board of Health. Um, we are um, having a special meeting. It was posted um, and the uh, link was posted also. Uh, we have Bruce Bennett and Ken Kushai here. I can't see either. I'm here. Oh, great. Bruce Bennett and this Ken Kushai here. Okay, well, with uh, Bruce Bennett, we do have a quorum. Uh, so we will, uh, Bruce, um, move, the, we, uh, move the meeting forward. Thank you. We'll open the meeting at 6.03. The meeting of the Sunderland, the special meeting of the Sunderland Board of Health. Thank you. Um, do we have the Waitley Board of Health here? Is Fran on? Fran Fortino? Um, I... I don't know if uh, Fran's on yet, uh, Carolyn, oh. but I am uh, Mike Archibald, and uh, I know Fran was intending to be here. He may not uh, be on at this moment, but um, I don't see a list. Uh, I don't see his name on a list yet. Okay. There's a there's a Fran, just a Fran, and there's a Francis Fortino. That's yep. the man. Oh, that's yep. that's Fran. Got yep. him. All right, that's very good. So we have a quorum also. Okay. Is there a Conway Board of Health available? I know Jackie. I'm not sure if Jackie was on vacation, but she might be able to zoom in. Uh, is there anyone else from the Conway Board of Health? There, there is a Jackie. I don't know. If, there's no last name. Okay, I'm. Uh, I think that's Jackie Choate. Can Jackie? Do you want to see if you have any other board members available? Okay. Um, apparently, uh, we do not have a quorum for the Conway Board of Health, so we'll move on to the Frontier Regional School Committee. Like to open the meeting at 6.05 for Frontier Regional. Judy, you want to do a roll call so we find out who's here? Yep. So Bob Halla, yes. Bill Smith, good. Yes. Great. Uh, Keith McFarland. Yes. Olivia Leone. Yes, I'm here. Judy's here. Damien, I saw Damien. Yes, I'm here. Ashley Dion. Lynn Roberts, hi Lynn. Yep. Uh, Mary Raymond. Uh, yes. Hi Mary, Missy. Yep. And Phil. Yes. Great, so we're good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, do we have the Conway School Committee here? I one of us is, one of us is. Yeah, I only saw one, Phil Cantor. I'm Michael Merritt's here. Okay. Uh, I'm okay. I thought I saw Elaine on it. I thought I saw Elaine. There is an Elaine. I can ask her to unmute. I just text her, so. Why don't we try Deerfield, Carolyn? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll move on to the Deerfield 
Uh, school committee. Um, this is Ken Cutterback, chairman of the Deerfield Elementary School Committee, calling our meeting to order at 6.06 .06 p.m. Uh, roll call, uh, Mary Raymond. Here. Dave, <clears throat> David Sharp. Yep, present. Er Erica Jacob. Uh, Erica is trying to get on. She's okay. And Mary, uh, Mary Ray and Carrie Etchells. I saw your name, Carrie. So, okay. We have a quorum. Thank you, Ken. Um, the Sunderland School Committee. This is uh, Greg Gottschalk, the chair of the Sunderland School Committee. And, and I have seen uh, Jessica, Megan, uh, Keith, and Peter. We are all in attendance. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, and the Waitley School Committee. Hi, this is Maureen, the chair of the Waitley School Committee, um, calling the meeting to order at 6.07. Um, and roll call Bob Howa. Yes. Beth Riley. Yep. OK. Thank you. OK, thank you, everyone. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have public comment uh, from written comments first will be heard prior to the discussion by the committees on the COVID-19 reopening concerns and reopening plans, face covering, anything related to um, COVID-19 to provide ample opportunity for members of the public to address the committees. Um, Frontier um, has been collecting the, the Union 38 has been collecting the comments. And um, I'm gonna turn this over to Ken Cutteback, who will manage the written comment portion. portion. Thank you, Carolyn. Uh, as Carolyn has mentioned, we have a number of uh, email and written comments that have been submitted uh, over the past uh, multiple days. I'm going to be reading them uh, along with Scott Dredge um, from the Frontier Regional School. And I will begin the process now. Uh, there, I, I don't have an exact count on the number, but we will note the authors and read the, uh, the comments that were made and proceed from there. So I will start with uh, message number one is from a Faith Kaufman. It reads, good evening. With the current surge of coronavirus cases, a number of Massachusetts boards of health have reinstated a mask mandate for all indoor public spaces in their jurisdictions. Deerfield should be one of them and our children and teens attending school in Frontier slash Union 38 and their teachers should be protected. Please make mask wearing a requirement for everyone inside the school buildings as the semester begins. Thanks for keeping our community safe, Faith Kaufman. Is Scott here? I am, second comment okay. is from Nancy Allen. Our two granddaughters are students at the Deerfield Elementary School and will be entering second and fourth grade. They participated in remote learning for all of the 2020-21 school year due to immune compromised members of our family. We are writing to ask you to require mask wearing at the beginning of the school year. Due to the circulating and highly contagious Delta variant, both the Centers for Disease Control and the Academy of Pediatrics are currently recommending universal indoor mask wearing by all students age two and older, staff, teachers, and visitors to K through 12 schools, regardless of vaccination status. The State Department of Elementary and Secondary Education has recommended that all students in kindergarten through grade six wear masks indoors, except students who cannot because of medical conditions or behavioral needs. Any unvaccinated staff in all grades and unvaccinated students in grades seven and above are also recommended to wear masks indoors. The Massachusetts Association of School Committees and the Massachusetts Department of Public Health recommend that masks or face coverings be worn in school buildings. Several area towns and cities already have mask mandates in place for schools, including Northampton, Amherst, Greenfield, South Hadley, Holyoke, and Springfield. There is significant scientific evidence that masks contribute to preventing the transmission of the COVID-19 virus. Wearing masks provides a layer of protection, which we feel is the responsibility of members of our school community. Any drawbacks to beginning the school year requiring masks seem far outweighed by the real risk of serious health consequences for the children, the staff, and their families. Sincerely, Nancy and Gary Allen. Uh, the next message came from Julie Cavaco. 
And it reads, I have been wearing a mask at work at Tilton Library whenever I see patrons. As the children's librarian, I have seen many kids with masks. I got vaccinated as early as I could and I understand the science. It is an airborne illness that depends on a viral load. I feel strongly that masks offer a level of protection and feeling of safety. Much parens, much like wearing a seatbelt, close parens. Wearing masks inside allows people to move more naturally among each other with less of a chance of transmission. Julie Cavaco. The next letter is from Amalia Smith. Dear members of the school committees and boards of health. Ah! My name is Amalia Smith and I'm going into eighth grade at Frontier Regional School. And I'm writing to address the situation of mask mandates at Frontier Regional and the middle school. I think it's very important to a lot of people at our school that everyone, including fully vaccinated people, are required to wear a mask for the time they are inside the building. There are many people who would like to take advantage of the opportunity to choose whether or not they want to wear masks or not and put other people in danger while doing so. I personally, as a student at Frontier, think I speak for other students as well when I say that when I see our classmates not wearing masks, we feel pressured to take ours off as well, even if we don't feel comfortable doing so. It can be distracting and worrisome if others are not wearing masks, which can make it difficult to focus on learning. That's why I think it would be good to make a definitive decision to require masks for students, teachers, and all staff. Some students would take advantage of the loose rules if there were not a mandate and get into other students and teachers' personal spaces and make people uncomfortable. When that happens, the teachers can't tell students to put the mask on because it would not be required. I also know that right now, it is a choice whether you choose to wear a mask or not, but the people who have died from COVID-19 and the variants of it do not get a choice. That is why I strongly encourage you to make the wearing of masks in our schools mandatory. Thank you for taking the time to read my email. I hope you take my views into consideration. Sincerely, Amalia Smith. Uh, this, the next message comes from Meredith Southergill. I apologize if I mispronounce any names. And, um, uh, and she writes, I am writing to ask that you support requiring that masks be worn for the start of the school year in Union 38 schools. My daughters will be entering second and fourth grade at Deerfield Elementary School. They were remote last school year due to immunocompromised family members. They joined me in asking that masks be mandated, not only because they grasp the gravity of the risk for, presented by COVID to those they love, but also in hopes that a mask mandate helps to create a level experience for all children. While I recognize that those who are opposed to mask mandates will point out that families may elect to mask their children, multiple studies have shown that risks of transmission are greatly reduced when all parties are masked. The protection of one child being masked around another who is potentially ill and unmasked is significantly lower. lower. Given the alarming increase in cases due to the Delta variant and the lack of a vaccine for children under 12, this does not feel like the right time to eliminate a layer of protection for our children and the community member <clears throat> members they live with. I am so deeply appreciative for all that you and other members of the community and school have done and are continuing to do to ensure the safety of our kids. While masks may hopefully be covering their smiles, there will be no less joy in their safe return to school. Should it be helpful or beneficial, it is fine to share this letter at the upcoming meeting. Respectfully, Meredith. The next one is from Erica Higgins Ross. To the Board of Health Select Board School Committee and other members of the Frontiers uh, admin team. I'm a vaccinated parent of a vaccinated 16-year-old high school student at Frontier. I'm also a therapist and over the past 18 months, I've had to nav navigate constantly evolving and changing rules around this pandemic, going all virtual and back to in-person, now reassessing yet again. I really understand how frustrating and confusing this all is. With the information we now have about the Delta variant, the fact that children under 12 who are not yet able to be vaccinated are getting sicker and filling pediatric wards in other states, and the unfortunate fact that some folks still choose not to vaccinate, causing this and other variants to be able to grab hold, it seems like we have no choice but to require masks for the beginning of the 21-22 school year. As the mental health professional, I have seen what the lack of in-person school has done to teenagers and children, and it is so important that we keep our kids in school safely as long as possible, hopefully throughout this whole year and going forward. The reality, is, as I have heard from teenagers and kids, is that the mask mandate is not a big problem for them. We have dress codes, we have behavioral expectations and codes of conduct at school. The safety mandate is just part of what they can adapt to. Several teams 
teens I work with actually said the outdoor mass breaks were a fun part of last year's hybrid model. Teens and kids are adaptable and resilient, and they will continue to be fine with the safety requirement. Meanwhile, if we don't do this, chances are we'll have outbreaks at the school, which will lead to interruptions in learning at best, serious illness, or even death at worst. I believe this is an easy choice for a board of health that has been responsive and cautious and has kept our towns very safe throughout this pandemic. I offer my services to help navigate conversations with people who may not understand why masks are an important aspect of our continued safety. For those of us who can be vaccinated and have teens who are vaccinated, we are at less risk, but it is our community responsibility to keep others safe. Would I rather my kid not have to wear a mask at school? Of course, I can't stand these things, but it's 100% the right thing to do at this phase of the pandemic. When 12 and under kids can be vaccinated, and if we're able to reach a level of vaccinations that makes it safe to unmask, that will be a fantastic day. Until then, I trust in our Board of Health and the school committee to keep everyone as safe as possible. Thank you for listening. Best, Erica, parent of a high school senior. Great. Uh, the, the next, this next email, I must be choosing all the short ones, Scott. Um, <laughs> but this next is written by Megan Wenzel. Hello. I am writing this email requesting that you consider all families returning to school this year and everyone's personal family choices to do what they consider best for their children. Nobody should be allowed to tell another parent what is best for their kid and we all have different opinions, which we are entitled to. Families should 100% have the choice. Unfortunately, I believe many families will be pulling their children out of Union 38 schools if masks will be mandated. I encourage you to follow the science and allow families to have the medical freedom to choose what's best for our kids. Thank you, Megan Wenzel. Next one is from Holly Johnson. I respectfully request that you institute an indoor mask mandate for all staff and students in the schools. I believe the safety measures put in place last year were a big reason why there was no community spread in our schools. From the CDC website, quote, due to the circulating and highly contagious Delta variant, CDC recommends universal indoor masking by all students age two and older, including staff, teachers, and visitors to K through 12 schools, regardless of vaccination status, end quote. This is also the recommendation of the American Academy of Pediatrics. Nearly all of the elementary schools remain el ineligible for the vaccine. Masks and dis distancing are the only protection available to them. With COVID cases once again on the rise and the transmission rate of the Delta variant being so high among children, now is not the time to pull back on any safety measures that worked so well last year. They allowed our schools to remain open to in-person learning. As the parent of a child on an IEP, I know that it is not possible for some students to learn remotely. I also know the fear that comes with my child possibly getting sick when they do not have the communication skills to explain that's wrong. Students successfully wore masks last year in school and while participating in athletics. I see no reason why masks should not be mandated in our schools for the upcoming year. Thank you for your time. The next email that I have is from David M. Smith, and it reads as follows. My name is David Smith, and I live in Northfield with ch three children at Frontier, and I would like to submit my hopes and concerns regarding face coverings and COVID reopening policies. <clears throat> I believe that masks should be mandated for all staff and students in the district for indoor settings to prevent a rise in transmission and protect our younger children in the elementary schools who are not eligible for vaccination, it is common sense to require masks for the middle and high school as well. My family includes one child each in elementary, middle, and high school. If masks are not required at Frontier 7 through 12, excuse me, the virus can and will find its way home to the unprotected and youngest of our children. Protecting all our kids and staff is the first responsibility of the school committee and leadership. The prospect of remote learning is not far away. After the isolation and loss of last year, we must look at current trends and anticipate a possible repeat of last year. It is a priority to keep kids in the school building this year. Our kids need the social and emotional connections with teachers, friends, and peers to grow and engage in authentic learning and experiences. <clears throat> if we look at the experience in Florida, Arizona, and other state, states that have resumed school already, we can expect that summer travel and the Delta virus will re reach us as well. I read today that two counties in Florida have over 10,000 students isolated and in quarantine based on a relatively small number of cases in that county's school districts. 
We should plan to avoid a foreseeable crisis in which a few cases per week lead to staff and students sent home for quarantine. Right now, there is no visible plan for remote learning, but if our students begin to must miss one or two weeks due to quarantine slash contact tracing protocols, we can expect demands for remote learning opportunities to grow. I worry that our optimism based on current vaccination and low case counts in Western Mass may lead us to neglect the possibility of another lost year as our schools are forced to retreat into various, retreat into various remote <clears throat> and hybrid school models in an ad hoc and improvised way. The MTA, Mass Teachers Association, has recently endorsed a statewide recommendation for vaccination mandates for eligible students and staff. I support this proposal as a high school teacher at Turner's Falls, an MTA member, and most of all, as a parent. I hope the school committee and board of health considers this question in the light of other vaccine mandates that appear on this year's student health forms. Polio, DTaP, MMR, and other vaccines are required for enrollment in school in order to save lives and protect the community. Frontier should add COVID to this list. To attend an outdoor theater performance this summer, we were all required to have proof of vaccine or a negative test. This precaution was for one night outdoors with masks. We should expect the same and more from our schools. The FDA is scheduled to approve the vaccine this September, not an emergency authorization, but as a safe and effective defense against the virus based on long-term data. After FDA approval, all eligible students and all staff should be vaccinated within a reasonable time frame. Even if the mandate begins in November or December, it would still reduce the risk in our community for the longer term and into the spring semester. There can always be room for religious and medical exceptions as there are with other mandated vaccines on the health form. Thank you for calling this special meeting and for your ongoing efforts to create a safe and rich learning environment for our children and community. David and Jennifer Smith, Northfield, Mass. I'm gonna, uh, sorry to interrupt, but this seems like a very one-sided meeting that you Good morning, my name is Mel Williams and I am writing on behalf of my son who is starting kindergarten at the Sunderland Elementary School. As educators and parents, you know that children learn through facial expressions, through sharing and interaction with peers, not being separated and afraid of their friends who could possibly infect them. Last year, you taught our children to be afraid of the air that they would breathe in the school where we want them to feel safe. You should all be ashamed, not this year. The science is there that shows that 0.003% of transmission is through children. It is also shown that masking our children for six hours a day does more harm than any form of protection. It's the parents' choice to vaccinate. It's the teachers and staff's choice to vaccinate. So it should also be the choice in covering our children's faces. Our young children are already easily distracted. Why add to it with mask concerns of themselves or others? Trust the science. Trust that we as parents have our children's best interests, health, best health interests at heart. Please don't make it a mandate to cover my son's smile. Please don't inhibit his ability to learn. Let it be a parental choice. Thank you for your time and consideration. Mel Williams. Uh, the next, next email comes from uh, Sarah Colsey. Dear Board of Health members, school committee members, and administrators, my name is Sarah Colsey. I am a mother to two boys age 15 and 12, who are both set to attend slash continue at Frontier this year. I am a proud graduate of Frontier. My oldest son has been in Union 38 school since first grade and my youngest son since kindergarten. All told, we have been in this school district for a combined total of over 22 years. For two school year now, years now, our children have gone above and beyond. They have sacrificed their traditional school years and have had to negotiate, navigate remote learning. They have lost out on field trips, yearly school events, socialization, and standard learning. The teachers and staff tried their hardest to adjust to remote schooling in the hybrid model, but it was not what I would call successful. Our children have fallen behind. There's no other way to say it. We are failing our children. I understand that with the pandemic adjustments had to be made, fear levels and unanswered questions were and, are, and still are high. I attended every school committee meeting since March of 2020. I have written it or spoken at many of them. I know how hard it is, has been to try to adjust to this new world we seem to be living in, a world that flat out scares many of us. There is a lot of pressure on people's shoulders right now, <clears throat> especially the boards of health and the school committees. 
you are hearing from a wide variety of voices. Some are pleasant, who are pleasant and nice and others who like to scream to get their points across. Some will be willing to see things from both sides. Some will flat out refuse. I have held firm on one belief in this whole pandemic that I have made, <clears throat> that I have made known during many meetings and letters. That belief is to give people a choice. I know that this meeting is to determine if masks will be required or optional this upcoming school year. I know you are all being bombarded by emails from concerned parents and community members. I know you will get letters from families asking for everyone to wear masks and from the families that ask for a choice. I know you are looking at data. Yeah, I know you are looking at data and trying to determine what is best for all. Last year, as we all debated the option of fully remote or hybrid, the bulk of you voted for hybrid. This was during the height of the pandemic when death counts were quite high. You wanted to give parents, staff, and students the choice. It was a risk, and when almost 80% of families, at least at DES, opted for hybrid, that said a lot about our community and how the families felt. The same should be said for giving parents, students, and faculty the choice on masks. I know you have all heard the talking points and understand that kids under 12 are not eligible for vaccination. At this point, all teachers, staff, and students over 12 have had the opportunity to get vaccinated if they so choose. This entire summer, parents, students, faculty, and staff have had the choice to live without masks. From what I have seen, most have chosen to go without them. Our children have enjoyed the summer spending time with their friends, enjoying activities again, and being free, free from having forced restrictions. Our children do not deserve to have the burden of protecting others on their shoulders. That is the argument I hear the most from people who want everyone wearing masks at all times. It is to protect the immunocompromised, the unvaccinated, and the elderly. When did it become okay to put that kind of burden on any child, be it a five-year-old or a 16-year-old? It is not their responsibility to protect others. It is the adult's responsibility to protect their children first and foremost. I am immunocompromised. I have been for 16 years. Never once have I ever expected someone else to protect me, let alone a child. How many of you, <clears throat> how many of you carry an EpiPen uh, in case someone has an allergic reaction? <clears throat> an estimated 3.6 million Americans were prescribed an EpiPen in 2015, as reported by the Wall Street Journal. According to the Food Allergy Research and Education Center, for disease, the Center for Disease Control reported that more than 300,000 ambulatory care visits occur per year for children under the age of 18 because of food allergies. How many of you carry an emergency inhaler in case someone has a hard time breathing? The number of people with asthma continues to grow. One in 12 people, about 25 million or 8% of the population, had asthma in 2009 compared with one in 14, about 20 million or 7% in 2001. More than half, 53% of people with asthma had an asthma attack in 2008. More children, 57% than adults, 51% had an attack. 185 children and 3,262 adults died from asthma in 2007. How many of you carry nitroglycerin in case someone has a heart attack? Heart disease is the leading cause of death for every men, woman, and people of most racial and ethnic groups in the United States. One person dies every 36 seconds. In the U.S. from cardiovascular disease, about 655,000 Americans die from heart disease each year. That's one in every four deaths. Statistically speaking, it is much more likely for a child or an adult to need one of those devices and need emergency <clears throat> medical care than it is for a person to catch COVID, need emergency care, and die from it. I read all the... I, read all the reports. I see all the news articles about Delta. I know that people are scared of all the cases that are being reported, especially in children, yet cases are very different, very, very different from deaths. This whole time since March 2020, there have been no, repeat, let me repeat, no children in this state who have died from COVID. There are many contradictory numbers for overall in the U.S., ranging from 271 to 375. Please do not get me wrong. Any child who passes away is an extreme tragedy, but you also remember, need to remember that sadly, many children die from a wide variety of reasons. <clears throat> Cancer, heart disease, diabetes, car accidents, homicides. No matter how much we want to keep our children in a bubble that keeps them safe from all harms, we just can't. Um, I'm, we're almost there. From the CDC, flu deaths, um, 
in children have been nationally reportable since 2004. Since that time, flu-related deaths in children reported to the CDC during regular flu seasons have ranged from 37 to 188 deaths. For comparison, due to, during the 2009 H1N1 pandemic from April to September, 358 flu deaths in children were reported. While any death in a child from a vaccine pre preventable illness is a tragedy, the number of pediatric flu deaths reported to CDC each season is likely an undercount. For example, even though the reported number of deaths during the 17-18 flu season was 188, CDC estimates the actual number is closer to 600. It is likely the actual number of children who died from flu during the 2019-20 season is higher as well. When was the last time children were required to wear masks in school during flu season? Never. 2009 season was listed as a pandemic too. No masks were forced on people then. Now we're hearing re reports of large upticks in RSV in children. Why? Because of measures like social distancing, masks, staying home, and not building up your immune system. The measures that were used to protect from COVID are now the measures that are causing upticks in other viruses. These viruses don't disappear in the summer. They're just much, much lower in frequency. Um, explains Dr. Richard Malley, a senior physician in pediatrics at Boston Children's. Coming off a year when few children got RSV during its usual seasons, effect, infections may spike at times when they would normally not be present, presumably because a little bit of the immunity in the whole community was not reinforced by exposure, he says. When we debated hybrid and remote last year, there was a third option. That <clears throat> option was full in person. We did not consider it at the time. Even the parents like myself who were called nasty names like um, child killer and lunatic did not fight for full in person to start. Yeah. As with the masks, there are three options again. The personal choice is to wear them or not. Everyone is forced to wear them or they are not allowed at all. I'm not asking for them to be completely banned. People who want to wear them, who feel they protect them, can by all means wear them. The parents, students, staff who do not want to wear them should not have to. At the end of last school year, our kids had to be sent home multiple days because it was too hot for them to be in school wearing masks. <clears throat> this past week, it was in the upper 90s again. Kids go back to school on August 26th. There is an extremely good chance that we'll see, we will see many days in August and September that are too hot again. How many more days of school are our children going to lose? How much farther behind will they fall? I am asking for a choice when it comes to masks. My children suffer from headaches constantly, bloody noses, acne, terrible breathing, inability to focus and concentrate and fatigue. I will not put them through that again. Thank you for your time and consideration, Sarah Colson. And before I start the next letter, uh, I just want to make a point of clarification for folks that um, we are reading the letters in the order they are received. This next letter is from Ben Colsey Sr. I read this letter in opposition to mandatory mask wearing in school for children. Last school year should be the perfect example of why children should not wear face masks. All too often, children were coming home with headaches, allergy attacks, and asthma flare-ups because of face masks. In the majority of those instances, children had to stay home from school the next day just to recover from their ailments. Major part of school is socialization. Last year, the children lost all socialization. The children could not see their classmates in other classes, could not interact at recess or lunch. If they played together at all, it was while wearing masks. Then the kids got red faces from trying to be active and headaches followed. Another issue was the complaints that the children could not hear the teachers clearly due to muffled mask speech. The children struggled all year trying to understand the teachers and making mistakes because of the muffled speech. During the school committee meeting last year, the motion to remove the masks while outside was brought up. The concern was children getting overheated and having difficulty breathing while playing. The committee member stated that all kids get red faces when playing and running, so no concern was needed. A couple weeks later, the schools were being canceled due to hot weather and safety concerns with masks. How many school days were lost last year due to heat with masks, but we sent kids to gym class and recess to run around wearing masks? No wonder kids were getting sick. The USA is a free society to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness and medical choices. If parents want to send their children to school wearing masks, let them wear masks. Those that don't want to wear masks, let them not wear masks. If teachers want to, let them. If not, they shouldn't have to. Freedom to choose is the right of all people. I don't have the power to force medical choices on my neighbors. The school board and boards of health should not force medical choices on my kids. It is with these beliefs and concerns that face masks should be optional to the parent, student, staff member and not mandated by the school. Sincerely, Benjamin Colsey, Sr. Uh, the next message can, uh, is from Doug Colsey. 
Uh, Dear Board of Health and School Committee, I don't want to wear masks because I get headaches from them while in school. I can't do all the things I want to do, like I can't play with friends if I have a headache. I can't play games and I have to rest if I want to get rid of the headache, which will waste my time. And in school, if I have a headache, I won't be able to focus on what the teacher is teaching and my work. Reason two why I don't want to wear masks is because I can't talk with friends at school anymore because we have to wear masks, which makes it harder to hear people. Because of that, we can't hear what our friends and teachers say, so that makes our grades go down. And if we can't hear, I will make mistakes on what I'm saying and I will get the wrong ideas on what I'm working on. Reason three of why I don't want to wear masks is because it's hot in the classrooms and we have to wear masks so that our masks sweaty and <clears throat> so we are breathing in sweat and chemicals in our mask, which makes it harder to breathe and could possibly make us pass out. And from that, we can get sick. And if we wear masks, it makes glasses fog up. Thank you, Doug. This next one is from Ben Colsey in 10th grade. To whom it may concern, I don't like the masks in the school. From my experience of last year, I found that the masks to make it harder to breathe while on my face and including during physical activities such as gym class, and running around or simply walking up the stairs. Another reason would have to be my glasses fogging up. Whenever I, ex I exhale, either through my mouth or my nose, my glasses get foggy, which makes it impossible to see where I was going or what I'm seeing. Other reasons include aggravating my allergies and causing no ble nosebleeds as well. From Ben. Uh, this next message comes from um, Amanda Wygant. Um, the message reads, Hi, can you please, oh, I'm sorry. Dear Board of Health and Joint School Committee members, I'm writing to voice my support of mandatory indoor masking for all FRSU 38 students and staff members for fall 2021. As a parent of a child who is too young to receive the vaccine and with the Delta variant proving to be highly transmissible and numbers continuing to climb, I believe it is imperative that we maintain protocols that the kids are already used to from the 2020-21 school year until such time that they have an opportunity to be vaccinated. Our older daughter will be a freshman at Northampton High School this year. Many other families have kids in school in other towns and in other schools, which heightens the exposure levels for all students and staff across the board. The prudent and right decision is to keep masks required until such time all kids have the opportunity to receive the vaccine. Our kids have been amazing, adapting so easily to masks. They want to be in school with friends, but this is scary for them too, and for us as parents. Why wouldn't we do everything we can to protect them? Should you vote against mandatory masks, I ask what the solution is for those who disagree and don't feel safe sending our children to the school until they can be vaccinated. Will you offer remote learning or is our only option to school choice to a district who cares about the health and safety of their younger students? I hope this will be a <clears throat> Moot question and masks will be required with a phase out as vaccines for under 12 become available. Thank you, Amanda Wygant. This next letter is from Melissa Sibley. We wanted to take a moment to reach out to voice our support for a mask mandate in the Union 38 schools. Every school district has that has opened without a mask mandate has had to close and move again to remote instruction. Variants spread among children and staff are causing our most at-risk population to end up in the hospital. Children are dying with this new variant spread. Our ICUs are filling and our medical systems will be pushed to the brink again. Seat belts and bike helmets are a no brainer for keeping our children safe and masks fall into the very same category. Better to be safe than sorry. Without masks, variant spread will close our schools. Our children need to be in schools. Mask wearing is not fun. Masks are annoying, but they are scientifically proven to act as a safe barrier for our children. How can we even consider passing up scientific proof of keeping our children safe? Masks are, are a solid glimmer of hope for an in-person school year for our children. Our children are so well-versed in how to wear masks after our successful in-person year last year. We have already proven masks work and that our children are wonderful community members for participating. They have done their fair share of supporting safety in our community and deserve the very same level of care. If a vaccine for children under 12 is approved and mandated, the Board of Health and School Committee should then reevaluate and amend the mask policy indoors as needed. The potential of our schools to close down after a week or to lose even one child with a long-term illness or death is not a price we are willing to pay when the minor inconvenience of wearing a mask in the classroom or hallway can help keep in-person education a reality and save the lives of our children. Our children and our community have already risked so much to make it through the last 17 months. To throw all caution and scientific evidence 
of the benefits of masks to the wind is jeopardizing the health of our students and discounting all that they have sacrificed for the safety of others during this time. Our most venerable population does not deserve to be unprotected. When the science proves that simple masks will keep them safe, they deserve this protection. There are some articles cited uh, off websites that I'll um, move through. The young people of Union 38 need our support. They need to be in school. They need to be alive. All the research scientifically supports past mandates. Keep our children and staff safe. Thank you, Melissa and Sean Sibley. Uh, this, uh, next, <laughs> this next note comes from Michael Palmer. To whom it may concern, as a resident of Waitney in Franklin County, I'm ah, very concerned. I lost the volume here. I am very concerned about the community spread of COVID and its vir virulent variants. Masking in congregate settings is an important part of limiting the community's danger from COVID, and this includes schools. Masks reduce the airborne speed of coronavirus. Mask requirements are good for the economy. Mask laws are justified to promote public health. And masking reduces the intensity of COVID-19 infection and sickness. Please mask the children. Michael Palmer. This next one is from Carrie Welch Palmer. Dear members of the Waitley Board of Health, Waitley and Deerfield Elementary School Committees, Frontier Regional School Committee, Deerfield Select Board and Deerfield Town Administrator. As a Waitley resident, I'm writing to you in support of mandating masks within our Waitley and Union 38 schools, regardless of vaccination status. I've been following the news and listening to continually updated information regarding COVID-19 and its variants as they continue to spread and put our communities at risk. Until all school aged children have the opportunity to be vaccinated against COVID-19, we need to continue to protect them. Even vaccinated individuals can get and spread COVID-19. And while they will be protected against getting seriously ill, they still may transmit the virus, particularly to those who are unvaccinated. While children are less likely to die or require hospitalization than adults, many are still developing long-term symptoms from the virus. Both the CDC and the American Academy of Pediatrics have published guidelines for return to schools. They both advocate for universal mask wearing for all over the age of two when indoors or at schools, regardless of vaccination status. We need to work hard to stop the spread of COVID-19. We are already seeing the surges of children contracting COVID and being hospitalized in both Florida and Texas since their return to schools over the past couple of weeks. Universal masking here in our schools can help to prevent that. Franklin County COVID-19 cases have increased by 486% in the past 14 days. We can't let up. I'm hoping that you all vote to support mask mandates within our schools and to help protect our children and communities. Thank you for all your hard work, particularly over the past 17 months during this uncharted territory of dealing with such a deadly pandemic. Educating and protecting our children are integral parts of keeping our communities whole, happy, and healthy. I greatly appreciate all that you do for our kids and community. Thank you, Carrie Walsh. Um, the, this um, this last, I think it's the last one, I'm not sure, but uh, to the members of the school committee, uh, this is from Jody Frazier. My name is Jody Frazier, and I teach fourth grade at Sunderland Elementary School, and I'm also the union building rep at Sunderland. I want to start by thanking you for your service to our school and community. I also want to thank you for helping keep us safe last school year. The mitigation procedures that were in place last year from social distancing to increased cleaning and sanitizing of the schools to masks for everyone helped keep our schools open and our students learning. Everyone hoped that this school year we would be back to normal, but with the Delta variant, that simply is not the case. According to the CDC, the Delta variant is more contagious and spreads faster than earlier forms of COVID. Vaccinated individuals with a breakthrough case can spread the virus to others and appear to carry the same viral load as unvaccinated individuals. Taking this information into account, I think we need to continue with the same mitigation procedures that were in place last year. I am asking you to vote to make masks mandatory at our schools regardless of vaccination status. We know from our own experience last year that masks help prevent the spread of this virus. Thank you for your time. This next one is from Kevin Doubleday. I think we can all agree that having a child wear a mask all day at school does not create the mindset or environment to successfully learn and grow. My child no longer looks forward to school. He no longer is excited to see his friends. Instead, he dreads the fact that he has to deal with difficulty breathing and fear of the adults in the building telling him to keep his mask on up over his nose. This community has always come together and come up with innovative solutions to very difficult problems. Now more than ever, we need to band together Think creatively and find a solution that allows our children to interact with their peers and educators without a mask on. 
Last year was a perfect example. The staff at Sunderland Elementary pulled together and persevered to create the best year they could. Now with mandates lifted and new facts and information coming to light about the side effects in, in, and inefficacy of mask wearing, we are posed with another difficult year. It is now our job to mold this new normal into what is best for the next generation. I urge you to consider a plan that allows our children to smile at one another and to see their teacher's face when reading their favorite book to the class. I have two children in Sunderland Elementary, four and eight years old, and the thought of them having to wear a mask six hours a day breaks my heart. I'd also like to remind everyone that on the back of any box of surgical masks, it clearly states this product does not protect against viral infection. You're up, Ken. That was the end. <laughs> okay, thank <laughs> one you. One more. No, no, I've got one more. I'm sorry, oh, Carolyn. Oh, right. This is the last one from, from Lori Conlon. <clears throat> dear board members, elected officials, community leaders, and fellow Deerfield residents, I'm writing regarding school opening, COVID health, and safety guidelines during the current Delta surge. I am in strong support of policies, including a mask mandate, promoting the efficacy, safety, and importance <clears throat> of vaccination, continued testing and tracing, and increased building ventilation and outdoor time built into the school day. I am not going to debate the merit of these protocols or list a bunch of studies that will merely contribute to repeating the same cycle of conversation we've been having as a community and nation for nearly two years. What purpose would it serve? What new information would it bring? How many minds have been changed doing so? How many would be changed tonight doing so? There are only so many hours in a day. People are rightfully exhausted with it. And in my opinion, we must focus our efforts not on the issue of masks, but on the societal issue underlying them. It is in that spirit that, that I respectfully urge each of you, not only, but especially those of you with a public platform in our community to adopt a personal and public policy of refusal to give lies, propaganda and misinformation a platform and rather be a platform for truth, facts and the realities held in science. These must be held in different regard than individual opinions and interpretations, including my own. These must be held in different regard than cherry pick studies and anecdotes, including those on both sides of the issue. Rather, we must defend the overriding patterns of studies and broad consensus of multiple disciplinary <clears throat> scientists, scholars, and professionals as a whole. Only then can we live as a safe, peaceful community and truly free individuals. The alternative is to descend into distrust, hostility, and chaos. I have seen it happen in the community from which I recently moved. And with all my heart, I do not want to see it happen here. And I believe most people on both sides here don't want that either, but it takes work. We have to live where we can, agree that up is up, down is down, two plus two equals four, a fork is a fork, not a spoon, or everyone loses. I humbly offer the following strategies and suggestions for giving truth its rightful platform, and I invite hearing others. Commit to speaking truth and not just propagating things you heard. If you're not sure of something, look it up or ask. No one cares if you ask questions. People are mostly worried about themselves. Many people have the same questions and find you asking it, a relief. Actively defend truth, respectfully point out and call out lies and misinformation when you hear it. It can be as simple as saying that is not true and doesn't have to devolve into a whole dissertation, just as something as simple as wearing a t-shirt that says be kind doesn't need to. Small words, small actions matter. Silence is agreement, silence is complicity. Be willing to venture out of your comfort zone. It gets easier the more you do it. No one has to be an expert on anything and everything. Truth and common decency are really the only tools you need. Respect the right and freedom of speech, which means acknowledging that it comes with responsibility. We are not free to yell fire in a public theater. We are not free to start a fire, then show up with fire extinguishers and pretend we saved the day. We are not free to insist there is no fire, disregard firefighters called to the scene, and remove fire extinguishers from the theater as people around us are literally uh, being burned and dying. Err on the side of goodwill and compassion. Expect and demand responsibility from yourself and others. Model it for others. Model it for children. Lead by example. Believe what you see in front of you with your own eyes. Believe others when they show up you who they are. Don't just listen to what they say. Watch what they do. Finally, and in my opinion, most importantly, sources matter. Here is where the truth is ultimately defined. Here again is where we must look to the broad consensus of multidisciplinary experts, of data, of fact checkers, editorial boards, reputations of balance, fairness, and scrutiny. These sources may 
but most often do not include politicians. So this does not have to be political. Although right now it absolutely is. And that's just another sad truth. We are all being used. <clears throat> These sources may, but most certainly do not often include pundit shows parading as newscasts on both sides. This can feel like a lot. Mostly we're all just trying to do our jobs, take care of our families and friends and get through the day. Some fun and joy are nice too. And we live in a most beautiful and amazing community for that. This all shouldn't have to be so hard and right now so ugly, but it does feel hard right now. But I trust as a community, we can do hard things and be better for it. But it takes each of us. No more passing the buck, putting heads in the sand, going along to get along, especially elected and public entities. No more giving lies an equal platform than truth. That is irresponsible and I respectfully demand better. I am new to Deerfield, but this is not a Deerfield issue. It is a national one. We are in crisis and there is no way out without the truth, of this without the truth. Sincerely, Lori Conley. And here's, we, here's the last one. Oh. I promise. Yep. It's from Brian Carney. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yep. Hello, we are writing to express our opinion concerning whether our children will be mandated to wear masks in school this year. It is not currently mandated by the state of Massachusetts that children are required to wear masks in school. Given this fact, and the fact that we live in such a rural area outside major metropolitan cities, it should be the parent's choice whether they would like the child to wear a mask during the school day or not. It should not be the school's decision whether our child should wear a mask when it is not mandated. This is the parent's right of choice. We strongly oppose a decision that will mandate mask wearing the school year for our children. Thank you, Brian and Sarah Carney. That's and it. Thank you everyone for your patience with the readings and uh, your attention to them. Carolyn? Okay, thank you, Ken. Thank I, you, Scott. I believe, I believe also we should check and see if Elaine Campbell has been able to open the um, Conway School Committee meeting yet or if they have a quorum. Oh, okay. Let's check, uh, is the Conway School Committee able to have a quorum? Can we? I Carolyn, know. I just talked, I just texted Elaine. She is in another meeting where she works. Okay. All right. Well, we'll move forward. And um, if Caitlin, this is Caitlin Rock. Um, I did see Ken Kushai. I was scrolling. So we do have a full uh, board for okay. uh, Sunderland. Just wanted to note that. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Caitlin. Okay. <laughs> We're going to move on now for uh, public comments. Members of the public wishing to speak or read their written statements should use the raise your hand function on the Zoom platform to indicate their wish to speak. If you want to dial in, uh, participants should press star nine, and that will also register as raising your hand. Okay, the allotted time to speak will be two minutes. Uh, Jennifer Gannett from our select board staff will introduce each speaker in order of the raised hand list and we'll use a timer to indicate when the time period is up. Speakers should please mute their devices after speaking so everyone as a courtesy for everyone. Okay, thank you. Um, so, okay, Jennifer, can you go ahead and start public comment? Uh, Allison? Okay. Hi, um, my good evening. My name is Allison Booth Mayo. I'm a Sunderland resident and a mother of children at Frontier and at Sunderland Elementary School. I'm here to ask you to follow DESE guidance by recommending but not requiring indoor masking. And that is indeed what the DESE guidance is. It's a recommendation. We need to face reality. COVID is going to be around for a very long time, if not forever. While the vaccine may be coming soon for younger kids, we are learning that vaccines are not a silver bullet. How long are people willing to require children to cover their faces? Forever? In my view, burdening children with restrictions such as masking is a totally unbalanced assessment of risk when it comes to COVID versus the myriad of other more significant risks that children face in life. If a parent feels differently, they are free to mask their children. Further, requiring masking and other measures does not recognize the value of normalcy for children. I asked the boards of health in particular to take a more holistic view of health in considering this issue. 
COVID cannot continue to be the singular focus. Whether a population is healthy is not solely dependent upon whether it is COVID free. The ability to breathe fee- freely is important for physical health. Being able to communicate with teachers and peers and express emotions through facial expressions, be understood by teachers, as well as a feeling of normalcy are important to the social emotional health of children. In short, parents should be allowed to decide what is best for their own children. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Jennifer, the next person. Victoria Palmer. Good evening, members of the Union 38 school committees, the local boards of health and concerned citizens of the towns of Conway, Deerfield, Sunderland and Waitley. My name is Victoria Palmer and along with Lisa Gaylor, I am the co-president of Union 38 Teachers Association. Together with our membership, we thank you for your service and dedication and ask you to consider the results of a recent survey of Union 38 Association members as we consider reopening health and safety standards for all students, families, community members, and our faculty and staff. Our survey questions included selecting masking guidelines based on the Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education or the CDC guidelines. 94 members or 60% of our membership participated in the survey. A majority, 64% selected CDC guidelines supporting universal masking. Additional members were asked about health and safety relative to themselves or their own families, with 33% reporting their own or their family's health is immunocompromised. We take seriously our responsibility to serve students by safely reopening schools and keeping them open. Please know that our members are excited to resume teaching in person this year and for our schools to remain safely open and accessible to all our students. We, along with the MTA, support vaccination for all faculty and staff and eligible students. We endorse rapid and consistent COVID-19 testing for faculty, staff, and students, upgraded and maintained ventilation systems that meet health and safety standards, along with continued social distancing. These science-based safety standards have been endorsed by the MTA, along with many other towns and cities across the state as well as those here in Western Mass. We ask, you, you, we ask you to thoughtfully consider this information as you support everyone in safely reopening our district schools. Thank you. Shelley? Thank you. Hi, how are you? So I have, have listened to the comments about the surge and everybody you know, being panicked over this new Delta variant. So what I'm going to give to you is the past two week data of all of our towns, Deerfield, Sunderland, Conway, and Waitley, and the, pos- the, te- the number of tests, as well as the, uh, the COVID positive results. Deerfield, within the past two weeks, 347 tests, four positives. Sunderland, 376 tests, two positives. Conway, 98 tests, zero positive. Waitley, 67 tests, one positive. Out of 888 tests with all, within all of our school districts, we only have seven positive COVID cases. That equates to a 0.0078% of positive COVID tests. The effects of wearing face masks and the potential health consequences have detrimental psychological and physiological effects. The psychological effects include compromised cognitive performance, delayed language development in children, an increase of 334% in suicidal and self-harm thoughts in children ages 13 to 18, decrease in empathy, feelings of isolation, depression, fatigue, and mood disturbance. 
The physiological effects include raised carbon dioxide in the blood, decreased oxygen levels in the blood, colonization of viruses, bacteria, and mold, chemical toxicity from textile and non-woven masks, self-contamination, dizziness, and a general feeling of illness, health consequences, staph and strep infection, bacterial pneumonia, compromised immune systems, anxiety, depression, headaches, hypertension, oral ulcers, inflamed gums, and cavities and throat abscesses. This data is straight from the Center of Infectious Disease Research and Policy. So by masking our children for up to seven hours a day while in school, you are subjecting them to all these potential health consequences for a virus that has been proven again and again to be less severe than influenza in this population. My last point, given the two minute time limit and mandating pool testing for our kids, or they will lose out in extracurricular school activities to whomever made and supported this motion, shame on you. You wanna talk about mandatory school testing? Let's have this discussion as adults and parents. Let's talk about ethylene oxide, a carcinogen in these nasal swabs, which could potentially harm our children the more they are exposed to it, or how pool testing is the best way to keep our kids in, in school and unmasked. But how dare you use our children as pawns and as leverage and threaten taking away activities that they are passionate about in order to achieve the desired outcome you want. This Thank is you, totally passion, and you should be ashamed of yourselves. My ask is to let Thank parents, there is no size fits all for us all. And I would Thank never you. be Thank you, Jennifer, the pressure. next person, please. Thank you. Hello, my name is Patrick. I'm from Waitley, Patrick Reardon. So considering masking because of the Delta variant, <clears throat> Delta variant, it may be more transmissible, yes, but it is a less deadly variant than its predecessors, just like the subsequent variances and every epidemic and pandemic ever. It is science, it's evolution, it's fact. The news and even our CDC, our own CDC is completely misleading us. A quick online check of our Franklin County Hospital bed occupancy due to COVID showed less than one bed occupied due to COVID. Kids survived the first variants uh, at a rate of 99.997%. And this, this current variant is even less deadly. The case fatality rate average for under 17s is 0.001%. Are we even really considering this? And should they contract, contract the virus, this virus is very treatable. Do not let anyone tell you otherwise. Safe and effective treatment is being withheld. The aerosolized CV particle is one micron. The mask can filter only down to three microns. I've seen the peer reviewed and published studies that have been distributed to our board and committee members here, and they clearly show that masks increase illness in children and have bad psychological effects on them. In 50 years, make no mistake, in 50 years, there has been not a single random controlled trial that has been able to demonstrate a mask to work at preventing the spread of respiratory illnesses. Israel's mask mandate generated an over 6,000% increase in cases. It does not work. FDA and OSHA only allow a certain amount of carbon dioxide in the blood of an adult for an eight hour workday. Peer reviewed and published medical studies clearly demonstrate that kids don a mask and reach this Coat this CO2 level in their blood in 20 minutes. This is credible data. A decision to mandate masks for children would not be a decision made to protect them. It would probably be more of a decision made to protect you politically. It would be a decision to deliberately harm them, to deliberately harm my child. A decision to deny our kids safety and good health so big pharma can make money and so fear can triumph over fact an ill-advised decision. Thank you. Megan Ashman. Hello, I am Megan Ashman. I have three children in the district, one at Frontier, one at Deerfield this year, and one starting at Waitley. So my question to you is, when does this end? What, what is the end game? We've told our kids to wear masks until they're all vaccinated to keep them from spreading the virus, but the CDC has admitted that those who have been vaccinated still get infected, have the same amount of virus as those who are unvaccinated, and can transmit the virus as easily as those who are unvaccinated. 
We've told our kids they have to wear masks because they're at risk from COVID, but the data shows the risk is less than from other respiratory viruses like influenza. The CDC estimates 332 have died from COVID-19 in 18 months. The CDC also estimates 434 children died from the flu during the 2019-2020 flu season and 600 died from the flu during the 2017-2018 season. More deaths despite a widely administered vaccine and lower case rates. The New York Times found children are about 10 times more likely to die in a car accident than from COVID. The Financial Times found children are less risk from COVID-19 than vaccinated adults. So please explain why we are forcing our children to wear masks, kicking them out of schools for weeks and pool testing them when they have no symptoms to avoid a, a virus no worse than the flu. We're told that they must wear masks to slow the spread of COVID-19, but numerous studies show that schools without mask requirements for children had case rates just as low or even lower than schools which did have mask requirements. Have you read these studies? Have you asked the mass DPH why all of the safety measures they recommend, symptom screening, ventilation, spacing, hand hygiene, and testing, the only one they require is the one with the least evidence to support it. So again, my question to you is when will these restrictions end? My son was homeschooled last year because of the mask issue. He so badly wants to be back with his friends that the mask has destroyed his ability to learn. With his learning disabilities and sensory disorders, the already difficult task of learning has been made even more difficult for him. I'm speaking to advocate for my son and the hundreds of other children in our school district who are suffering because of this same issue. Please give parents a choice to decide whether they choose to mask their children or not. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. Milan? Go ahead. You're muted, Kara. I just unmuted you. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, there has been a lot of talk about science. So let's talk science. One of the most prestigious American medical journals is JAMA, the Journal of American Medical Association. This prestigious organization recently conducted one of the most rigorous random controlled trial-based peer-reviewed examination of the efficacy or lack thereof of mask wearing in school age kids. I cite a brief paragraph from this June 30, 2021 article entitled Experimental Assessment of Carbon Dioxide Content in Inhaled Air with or Without Face Masks in Healthy Children. Quote, most of the complaints reported by school children can be understood as consequences of elevated carbon dioxide levels in inhaled air. This is because of the dead space volume of the masks, which collects exhaled carbon dioxide quickly after a short time. This carbon dioxide mixes with fresh air and elevates the carbon dioxide content of inhaled air under the mask. A recent review concluded that there was ample evidence for adverse effects of wearing such masks. We suggest that decision makers weigh the hard evidence produced by these experimental measurements accordingly, which, suge which suggests that children should not be forced to wear face masks. There has been some, pre that's the end of that quote. I wanna say that there has been previous preliminary discussion earlier this summer about requiring only unvaccinated kids to wear a mask in school. This is a deeply concerning potential development. Kids in school, even in the best of times, can experience bullying, ostracization, ridicule. Can you imagine the psychological trauma and abuse that the unvaccinated kids would experience with quote, a blazing scarlet letter on their faces announcing their current status? Toward the end of last year, it was reported that some students were freely expressing their opinion that anyone who declines vaccination must be, quote, idiotic, quote, crazy, or delusional. With that kind of pre-existing condition, we are setting up those masked children for horrific shaming, abuse, and condemnation. You don't need to be a psychologist to know this is morally and ethically wrong and deeply detrimental to the mental health of children. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Um, in one second, uh, Jennifer, I, I just need, oh, Caitlin, Caitlin, yes. Um, I, I just need to cite, um, because the truth is the truth, that JAMA study uh, was retracted on July 16th. It was retracted due to um, political. So you know. okay. Thank okay. you. Okay, okay, thank you. 
Thank you, Caitlin. How come she gets to talk and you don't mute her when she interrupts? She's on one of the boards. It doesn't matter. She's interrupting. No. Uh, Lewis Goldstein. The JAMA article was retracted due to political pressure. Just on the topic. <laughs> Hi, just need to, the camera won't turn on. I don't know if you need to allow me to access it or you can leave it off. Um, my daughter goes to the Waitley Elementary School and um, what's amazing to me is uh, what, I'm, what I've heard for the past hour. Um, and what I'm hearing is a lot of adults um, talking about what I think their views are and their biases are politically, socially, and what we have here is parents fighting with parents and children uh, are unfortunately the result of this eye rolling and these quotes of all these figures. It's just um, it, it's amazing to me as an adult. So what I what I do know, because I'm a simple person, I don't I can't quote journals and I can't quote the Wall Street Journal. I'm a simple person that knows that I want what's safest for my child. I know we are in the craziest time I've ever experienced in my life or my parents ever experienced in their life. And I know we don't, none of us know exactly what's gonna happen. None of us know exactly when this is going to be over. None of us know exactly if a bunch of kids will get COVID or they won't if they uh, wear masks or don't wear masks. But what we do know is there are thousands of people in the hospitals in, on ventilators. We know there are kids in the hospitals that are sick. And why wouldn't we take an extra precaution for the time being to have our kids wear masks for a month or two months and then reassess this and stop the parents from fighting and making this about the kids when it's about all of us fighting about whether we're conservative, liberal, whether we voted for Trump, whether we voted for Biden, it's all, it's, it's not about the safety of the kids in my opinion of what I'm hearing. So uh, I hope we'll go and do what's safest which is to allow the kids to wear masks and we'll look beyond our own needs to argue with each other about our political views. Thanks. Thank you, Lewis. Rebecca Klaus? Klaus? Thank you. Good evening, Klaus, yeah, thank you. Good evening. We are 18 months into the COVID-19 pandemic and the need for at and I'm writing to, to express my need for the masking in indoor spaces. This need is not diminished. I'm writing to urge you to vote to continue the policy of masking in indoor spaces for everyone, regardless of vaccination status for the 2021 school year, 2021 through 2022 school year. The Delta variant spreads 50% faster than the version that first began infecting people in 2019. It has been shown that vaccinated people can, con can contract the Delta variant and can transmit the virus to others, even if they do not have any symptoms of illness. Our elementary school age children are, for the most part, not yet old enough to be vaccinated. This puts our children at tremendous risk of contracting the Delta variant of COVID-19, which unlike the original strand, clearly and alarmingly strikes children as well as adults. This has recently been seen in states like Texas and Florida. Efficient masking is one of the most effective ways to slow the transmission of the coronavirus. We all know that masks can be hot and uncomfortable, but so is being on a ventilator. We need to continue the wearing of masks to slow the spread of the virus. Allowing children and adults to be unmasked. Sorry. I'm sorry, should I continue? Yeah, go ahead, I just muted. Allowing children and adults to be unmasked in school would be anti-science, dangerous, and a moral dereliction of our duty to keep our kids safe. Please vote to require the wearing of masks for all, regardless of vaccination status. Thank you for your time and consideration, Rebecca and Kevin Klaus, parents of a third grade and fifth grade Sunderland Elementary students. Thank you. 
Thank you. Jill Dickinson. Hi, I'm here. Okay. Hi, my name is Jill Dickinson and I have three children in the district. District. My two boys are at Frontier and my daughter is at Sunderland Elementary. I can't believe I'm sitting here begging for my child to have the right to breathe fresh air during the school day. We truly live in an upside down world. <clears throat> we are told to follow the science by the media. So that's what I did. I went looking for the science on mask efficacy. And what I found was most of them, or all of them actually stated that masks simply don't protect against viruses. Um, and it says oh, it right on the side of the box. The side of the box says it does not, let's see. Yeah, they don't, the masks are really for infected people. That's what Dr. Fauci said. Um, but honestly, I really wouldn't care. Like it's a guy that said, um, you know, why not just put it on? Just put it on to stop the fight. Okay, that's great, but it can cause harm to your child. So they're not getting enough oxygen and the CO2 can't get out. So they're breathing that back in. Um, and I can't believe it when I was told that my kids were going through PE class with a mask on. That's insane to me. You're restricting their breathing during exercise. Yeah, I don't know. They're constantly fiddling. Germs get in there. Um, and most importantly, I think we're completely overlooking the psychological effects that mask wearing has on them. They can't see their friends' faces. They can't see their teacher's faces. And what about a kid learning to read? They can't see their teacher enunciating words. We are teaching them that the air they breathe is toxic and that everyone is a virus carrying threat. I can't imagine the anxiety our kids must be feeling on a daily basis. <clears throat> and the schools in Martha's Vineyard just required masks. And I find it quite ironic that Obama is there with a huge birthday party with 500 people, no masks. Thank you, Jill. But not for me. <clears throat> Anyways, we live in America. We have freedom. We have choice. We're not saying, oh, you can't wear a mask. No. If the parent wants to mask up their that child, up. That's, but it's our choice. So we need to stop with the political theater and the virtue signaling and just focus on your kid. And don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Thank you, Jill. Thank you. Thanks. Michelle? Uh, Michelle Vigeon? Yes, please. OK. Um, hi. Um, I have a child in Sunderland Elementary School, and I am pro-mask. Um, the evidence shows that masking significantly reduces infection rates, but everyone has to wear them to do so. Coronavirus isn't new. There's been outbreaks of SARS, a similar virus for years in Asia, which have been significantly reduced using masks. The reason that we are all wearing masks instead of just those who are sick is because of, of the delay in symptoms. Any child death that is prevented matters. All children matter. <laughs> Masking prevents outbreaks and keeps the schools open and it helps with that sense of normalcy that people keep talking about. Prevention is worth a pound of cure. The number will only rise as being outside becomes difficult. You put the measures in place while the numbers are low so that they never get high, not afterwards. Please trust the consensus of experts and not a Google search. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Justin Gendron. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'm a father of four children in the district and I'm here with my wife, Leah. Um, I just quickly wanna say uh, I've heard you know, a lot of science on both sides, we could say, and we would each argue one side is correct science and the other side is not. Um, I think it's safe to say we can all agree that different news platforms are giving contradictory evidence and also withdrawing uh, their different stances and changing them frequently. Um, it's been hard. I've seen families split apart fighting about this. I've seen families that aren't seeing each other for two years because of differences in opinions in these matters. It's very sad. Um, but I think that the main thing that we need to realize through all of this is that because we're all 
feeling strongly one way or the other, we should have the choice on whether or not our children wear masks in school. My wife would like to say something. Yes, hello. We have three children in Waitley Elementary and our oldest is starting high school in the fall, um, a milestone in her life. She was very much looking forward to it. Um, is disappointed thinking that she may possibly have to wear a mask, unable to meet new friends, see her teachers' faces and smiles. Um, our kids all really liked school, you know, before the coronavirus, before the masking was pushed upon them. Um, they express many times that they're struggling to breathe. How can we expect our children to actively be learning at school when they're struggling to breathe? Like, how is that fair? Political opinions aside, science aside, like we are citizens of the earth and we all deserve the right to breathe freely. And for those who feel more protected by the mask, by all means, put on your mask, that's fine. But please give us the rights with our children. Like they're our children. Why would you wanna take away their oxygen? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jessica, our owner's phone. Jessica, is you Jessica? Uh, all right, I'm Jessica, um, and I have a son going into the second grade, and um, my younger son is going into preschool at Deerfield. Um, America was founded on the principles of freedom, and this is what makes America the greatest nation, freedom to make our own choices. There are many people in this community, including myself, who have significant concerns that, is that this basic right is being taken away from us and our children. By mandating masks, you would be doing the same things to families that you are trying so hard to change, oppression. We the people are being oppressed and forced to do something we don't wanna do. This is the same theory as slavery, something we don't want to repeat. By mandating masks and not giving families the right to choose, what does this teach our children? What happened to my body? Oh, please. You would be taking away our basic human rights and our freedom of choice. Parents do not follow a handbook to, to raise their children. One basic foundation is however the same in all homes, freedom to raise their children how they choose. There seems to be no consideration given to any of the negative outcomes of face masks being worn in the classroom all day. Why is it okay for people to go into a restaurant with a mask and take it off when they get to their seat? and it's discrimination. Our children are being set back socially, emotionally, educationally because our teachers are too busy trying to enforce the rules and not enough time teaching fundamentals and catching our children up from how far behind they are from last year. As a mother of a child who has a disability with social cues, mass directly effective because he cannot learn how to interact with his peers appropriately by reading their faces and how they react. This affects all children, disability or not. Please think about what covering our child's face does their, to their developing immune system, the psychological damage you do to your kids by covering their faces and telling them the air is toxic to breathe and that everyone around them could be sick. There have been recommendations made to man, not mandates. Our own Governor Baker has not issued a universal mask mandate and neither should you. The COVID numbers, numbers in our four town district community do not warrant masks. This, lastly, in this community, one size does not fit all. Do not let history repeat itself and enslave the community without freedom of choice. There is a happy medium here where we all win. Give families, the people who elected you to represent us and pay your salaries, the options to choose what is best for our children. Thank you. Thank you. Amanda. Wygan Baker. Decatur, sorry if I messed your name. Hi, up. no, thank you, thank you. Um, and I did submit a, an email earlier and I appreciate you reading it. Um, and I think it's important to recognize the fact that all of us feel so strongly about our kids. And I think that is a statement to our whole community and I love that. And in that vein, when we had these meetings last year and we talked about what will be healthy, it all surrounded what is healthiest for our kids. And I get that some kids have certain situations that 
are not going to be conducive to a mask. But let's be honest, the majority of our district has already acclimated to it. We have seen the science. We have seen how it affects people. And we are already seeing in districts around the country. And yes, we might feel that we're isolated. I get that. I love living in a small town. I love knowing my neighbors. I love knowing who we are, but people travel. People have families outside of our little area. We have college students coming in. When we go to the grocery store, guess what? <laughs> 80% of those people are college students who are probably partying it up on the weekends. We have to protect ourselves. And if we're mand mandated to wear a mask in the grocery store, why wouldn't we do that in our own schools to protect our own kids? And those with a, pr like a, a situation where they may not be comfortable with a mask, I am confident that our district will make a accommodation for them to make them comfortable. This is who we are. This is Sunderland. This is Deerfield. This is Waitley. This is Conway. This is our school district. So why wouldn't we embrace all of our kids, especially the ones who are too young to get a vaccine? and protect them until such time and phase out masks. Like, let's start it smart and phase it out Thank as you. we can. Thank you. Thank you. Joseph, Elias, Elliot? Yes, hello. Uh, thank you. Um, and obviously this is very emotional and um, everyone has very good points, scientific, medical, political or religious, and we have to respect that, and I, I do. Um, funny, my, my son overheard some of this, and he, he said something very simple to me. He said, Daddy, you know, we got to wear shoes and shirt when we go to the grocery store. We got to wear shoes and shirt and dress, you know, appropriately when we go to school. What's the big deal? Why don't we just put the mask on? And I thought that was pretty simple. And I don't mean to disrespect any people. People made very good points about choice. Um, and I'm not going to tell you which side I sit on, but he just put it very simply, and I just want to make that statement. Thank you. Uh, Carolyn, there's no more hands up. So back to you. Thank you, Jennifer. Can um, I, could I, I'm sorry, can I put my hand up visually? Because I can't find the little button to put my hand up. And I, I just had something really short to say. I just want to thank okay. uh, Lynn Rock, the board member who um, you know spoke up about the JAMA study that was recalled. That's exactly what I meant in my letter when I said I think it's the responsibility of especially board members, all of us, but especially board members, to um, make note when something is said that's not accurate or true. And I appreciate that, Ms. Rock. Thank you. And the only other thing I want to comment on is um, the speaker's um, equivalency of this issue to slavery. I, 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 there's just, I'm speechless regarding that. And there's just no equivalency there. And a statement like that is um, just disgusting and completely unac unacceptable. Um, so I hope we don't ever allow anything like that to continue without being addressed as well. Thank you so much. Thank you for your comments, everybody. Um, so we're going to move on now uh, to. Can I can I quickly just say one thing? I'm sorry, my dial did stop out for a second. But if the mask is something that we're all really strongly feeling about, is this something the schools can start? providing for our family so that we don't have to continue to purchase them, that the child can just come in and can give them a mask in school. And also I know that's transmitted through, you know, also through your eyes and stuff. So if we feel that the mask is really protecting a lot, ultimate protection, maybe we should wear goggles and other things that the school can provide for each child. 
just a thought. Thank you. Okay, uh, so I'd like I'd like to raise my hand. I can't find the button, but I want to respond to the comment about slavery. My ancestors were slaves. So don't say that kind of stupid stuff about this being akin to slavery. It is not. Well, uh, that's how I feel that I'm I don't being care. What, I don't care how you feel. That's just stupid. Thank you for thank you for your public comments. Thank you. Um, we're gonna we're gonna move on. Wow. Now. Um, wow. We're gonna move on now, please. Um, one everyone second. everyone please be muted um we're going to have a discussion now with um between the boards of health and the school committee um as deerfield board of health chair i um to start the discussion i'm going to make a motion that deerfield require mass indoors for all students at and staff at the deerfield elementary school and the frontier school with the exception in the current policy that allows for medical and special needs um, so we would like to open up the discussion between the boards and the school committee, please. Thank you. I also want to make sure that people understand that this is an evolving situation and that I would foresee us at least reviewing this um, when the vaccine is more is available for the under 12s, as well as if the situation gets worse in um, our area um, with outbreak. So, um, Carolyn, this is Dave. I'm going to second your motion. Okay, thank you, Dave. I appreciate that. Um, is there any other boards of health that would like to uh, make a comment, or Trevor or Dave? Do you want to um, make comments? Oh, this is Caitlin. Is this only this is only for Deerfield? Yes, this is a Deerfield, but I'm, I wanted to have the discussion so that we could. Um, oh, do you think we should have just, just I, th I think we should to streamline it. Um, I think we should have the discussion to make it very clear for our constituents. Um, we'll do a very brief discussion with Sunderland only after you're done. Okay, but I, I was hoping to get your input as the Board of Health, um, all boards of health into our motion. Um, I obviously it okay. is our it is our Board of Health motion, but um, I'm hoping that you will be able to um, have discussion. The other three boards have students going to Frontier, so. Okay. Um, do you want to make a comment, Caitlin? Um, well, I, I uh, yes, uh, Caitlin Rock, Sunderland Board of Health. Um, I would um, I would support a uh, masking mandate for now um, with uh, the proposal to. Uh, to revisit it um, within two months. So uh, seeing what um, how the Delta variant is uh, trending, um, I'm basing my response, my decision on um, the um, American Academy of Pediatrics and the CDC uh, guidelines, and um, as well as what we're seeing with the Delta variant uh, south of the Mason-Dixon line. I think the only uh, difference between their uh, physical bodies and our physical bodies is uh, the fact that we have uh, followed masking guidelines for the last 12 plus months and we have uh, done a lot of uh, vaccination work and we have done a lot of mitigation. And I think that we should continue with that in congregate settings and um, keep our numbers low. I think our kids are resilient. I have children in the school. I know it sucks and I know they're gonna be angry with me and uh, they already are. And, um, but uh, I do believe our children are part of the community I do believe it is our children's responsibility to keep the spread of Delta down. Do I necessarily believe that our, these children are going to die from Delta? Unfortunately, there are some, it's a very low percentage, but I am trying to keep the spread of the COVID virus down. And the, the unvaccinated and even the vaccinated people in congregate settings is where we need to mask. 
And I, that is, that is my reasoning for why I am voting in when my board votes to require masking at the uh, Sunderland Elementary School. Thank you, Caitlin. I think um, I just want to reiterate again, our, uh, the priority is to have, you know, kids that uh, lower the risk as much as possible for all our kids and also to keep the schools open. I think all of us were at the end of last year, we're definitely looking forward to a normal year. I, I, I think the schools are making a real effort to have a normal learning year with the exception of having to wear masks, having, to, you know, there will be mass breaks from my understanding. Um, there will be outdoors time with no mass. Um, I have been in touch with uh, Carl, um, Sarah, the um, athletic director and um, the Department of Public Health uh, weekly calls on sports have not started up, but I, the kids were very committed last year and um, did a really good job of, of being careful. And the evidence from last year's clusters that happened in the sports teams were really related for the most part to carpooling um, and exposures and also locker room exposures. So um, given that information, um, Carl has worked really hard with the kids, cooperation with the kids to be careful. And I, I trust that they're going to do that again. So I don't feel like we have to do any other um, restrictions at this point. Um, and, and, and it is an evolving situation. So we would definitely be reviewing it, Caitlin. Um, I, I also do think that it's very important to note that last year we did such a great job. I mean, I can, you know, I was really in charge of Sunderland only, but we had cases come into the school on a Monday, <laughs> a positive case. The child sat in a second grade classroom. We found it through testing. The child was in the second grade classroom, got them out. There was no spread. There was no spread to teachers, no spread to other kids because of the mitigating factors. We had this, our school did an amazing job. And if we follow the same protocol, I, and I think that we are gonna be fine. I don't think we're gonna to need to go remote. We're not gonna lose days. I think that we're gonna be great. And I, that is what I wanted. I want schools to be open full time. And I wanna get rid of these masks as soon as we can. Um, Fran, I see you on. Would you would you like to make a comment? Yes, um, I'm Fran Fortino from the Waitley Board of Health. Um, I too have uh, similar concerns to Caitlin. All of us on our board, actually, uh, particularly alarming is uh, case rate increases in Franklin County, and the inf those infection rates have gone up consistently. Are at, at the same time the vaccinations uh, efficacy is starting to wear off. So this COVID with Delta variant is doubly dangerous at this point when people are losing some of the, um, the immunity that's conveyed via the vaccinations and the kids under and from sixth grade and under are not vaccinated, have no access to vaccines. And even though, and even those in the old upper grades may or may not have been vaccinated. So um, following the CDC following. and also the, um, um, the American Academy of Pediatrics and other studies that have shown that masks are effective, we indeed will follow and support this um, motion, including for Waitley Elementary School. Can you talk to the rates? Can you talk to the increase in rates, please? Yeah, um, it's uh, gone up with some 400% in Franklin County over the last couple of weeks. What does that equate to in positive COVID? Oh, Shelly, this, this is between the board members and the school <sighs> committee. Thank you. Um, is there another uh, Board of Health member that would like to Carolyn, speak? Carolyn, I'd like to speak through Spanish Sunderland. Yes, thank you. I, I have to agree with what Caitlin was saying and also what the youngster said. Um, through his through his father that you know we have to wear shoes we have to wear shirts and things like that um, the only exception to, to Caitlin's requirement 
because I think we should look at this on a weekly basis and keep on track of it to see how the spike is going. And when we see the spike going down, then maybe change our policy then. But I think we should keep an active role in it um, and try to unmask the people as quickly as we can. I, I, I you know, Bruce, I ha have had no problem with that. We've had multiple meetings on a regular mm -hmm. basis all last year, and I don't have any problem with that. Um, we just, I, I think it's important to encourage common sense and um, and like I said, it's a evolving situation for re, for us to review. Um, is there anyone else that would like to speak um, on the board before we go open it up to the school committees? Oh, Carolyn, this is uh, yeah. Trevor McDaniel, uh, dear for Board of Health. Um, so a couple things. I've been really um, heartbroken that we're back having this discussion again. It was so nice to watch our rates and the cases you know my email was pinging all last year with um with cases after case after case coming in and then you know uh once people started getting vaccinated you know we we didn't have the we didn't have the delta variant up variant up here um you know we went weeks and weeks with no cases i mean no tick cases no nothing like it was a great couple months you know a couple months few weeks um and then it's, you know, a majority of the country just hasn't taken the step to vaccinate, you know, and that's why we're here is because we're ignoring the science of getting vaccinated. If people would just vaccinate, we would not have this issue. Um, we constantly are going to see this, this thing variant. It's going gonna, it's gonna to mutate from the Delta because it's been festering in millions of people, millions of unvaccinated people, just like it mutated into the Delta variant. variant and it will, it will mutate again into something that we can't protect ourselves from. You know, th this virus could care less about your freedoms. It could care less about your political um, persuasion. It could care less about anything. All it wants to do is mutate and kill. That's what it does. It's like the Terminator. It does not care. It will keep coming and coming and mutating until it's something we have nothing to protect ourselves against. We have many diseases that we have, um, superbugs, that we have no more um, antibiotics to treat. You know, this thing, if it just keeps festering, will come into a, a, a situation where we have no protection. Right now, we are blessed that Donald Trump put his effort behind getting a vaccine out to the people as fast as he could. And he took it. Everybody in his party took it. We want people to take the vaccine so we can protect ourselves. And I cannot wait until we have the FDA approve it so we can mandate it fully. And then I cannot wait until they uh, approve it for the kids from five up or two up, wherever we can get the most people vaccinated, the better we'll move on. We don't have freedoms to run red lights. We don't have freedoms to do everything that we wanna do. You, you have freedom to crash right through a stop sign that you're free to do that, but you're gonna injure somebody. It's a very similar situation. You don't have the freedom to injure other people because of your personal choice. I know it's frustrating. This, you know, this country is founded on freedom, but we as a community decided that we wanted to live in a community, we had to live by certain rules. And some of our freedoms would get curtailed to protect our general public. And that's why you got public health. That's why we have sewer systems. That's why we have all these other things that public health demanded of us. Uh, this is one of those things. It's frustrating. There's not a bunch of people clamoring and, and arguing and fighting about the polio vaccine right now. Nobody is coming and saying, my child you know, can't go to school because they're not gonna get vaccinated by polio. People just go get the vaccinations when they're born and multiple doctor's visits, there isn't a peep said about it. This, for some reason, this got politically ugly and it's just festered and gone over and over just like the virus has. And I cannot wait for the day that we are beyond this. I thought we were close, um, but it, but it's back. And, and I hate to have to say we need masks again in the schools. I thought hard about, do we just do them in the elementary school and not the high school? Because, hey, everybody in the high school is old enough 
they've been vaccinated or not. And it's, you know, freedom of choice. If you want to run that risk, be my guest. But what happens is you have multiple people with multiple kids and multiple grades, and you then run that down to the younger grades. And, and we're very grateful right now that the virus um, is not going to kill um, the younger kids as much as it has the older. You know, when they're, when they're sucking for a breath on a ventilator, hard, they can't be around their family. We are thankful that we're not seeing that immensely. But if this thing continues to again fester, it will turn into something that we will not be able to protect our children again. So, you know, it pains me to have to support this measure to go back to mask wearing, but I think it's the safest thing to do. But after we take this vote, I will, I will charge the committees to come up with a policy to get rid of the mask policy. And, and that has to do with vaccinations at a certain percent. I don't know if it's 50, um, I don't know if it's 95%, 90%. I'm not sure what it is. We have to look at that, study that, but I want it viewed constantly. And I want to get rid of this mask mandate as fast as possible through vaccinations. So if we can get that to happen, uh, that will be my next motion after we take this vote. Uh, sorry for the long-winded discussion. Okay, and I'd like to just add to what Trevor is saying. This is Dave Wolfram. The, I have to agree, the masks aren't 100%. The vaccine's not 100%. Uh, nothing in this world is 100%. I taught emergency medicine through an EMT program for 25 years. And I saw the ebbs and flows in medical care. Um, and I came to the conclusion med emergency medicine is probably one of the most inexact sciences known to man. And, you know, and I keep on mulling over this, you know, I hate wearing a mask. It's like me wearing a hat. I hate, hate wearing a hat. But I don't know if I could live with myself if we ended up losing a 10, 11, 12 year old child in one of our schools just because we decided that we did not want to have a mask. You know, yeah, they're not 100%. But how many colds and flus did we have last winter? Hardly any because of those masks. So they do work. No one was testing for flu. Um, is there any other... Um... Board of Health member that would like to speak before we open up to school committee? Yes. Why is this person sharing a screen? Yes, I would. Um, I would like to oh, speak. Right. Can you Thank you. That screen, please. Um, uh, who's, who's got that up there? Um, it says John yeah, Williams. I, Jen, you can take that down. Um, can we take that down? So, Jennifer, it can you help your cause? Trust me, it doesn't. Thank you, um, Michael. Go ahead. Thank, Thank you. you. And as a um, registered nurse and a board of health member of Waitley, I too support the mask mandate um, as it um, as it stands right now, um, with regular reevaluation. I'm not clear about weekly. There's no question that we are watching it daily as a board of health, but um, to to you know. Um, leap back and forth weekly um, with, the, um, with the numbers is, um, is, is only going to cause more chaos. So um, I'm not sure if a weekly change um, might be appropriate. At this point, the CDC and the American Academy of Pediatrics is quite clear, um, and I fully support that. We still have weeks of summer left, um, which means people traveling to the coast uh, where um, numbers are much higher than our community um, and other parts of the country. Um, and we have a huge super spreader event still coming up called Memorial Day. Um, so that's all in front of us. And, um, you know, Delta is here now. And what, we're, what we are um, watching very closely is Lambda. Um, it's spreading um, and extremely um, concerning uh, coming up from South America. So um, there's there's... A lot of concern, um, and of course, the first and foremost is 
the health and wealth of our uh, uh, health and um, um, well-being of our children. Um, and um, you know, I, I, I recognize that, um, but I think um, you know this is in a preponderance of precaution. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, is there anyone else on the boards of health? Okay, could we move on to the school committees? Would the school committees like to, any school committee person like to make a comment? Can we start? Can we just do it by by towns if we can, and by frontier first? Yes. Anybody uh, from uh, frontier? Yeah, that's fine. I just felt like there should be some input from you all. Um, I the boards of health have good communication and. And everyone on any of the boards of health know they can call me and we can call a meeting at any time and review anything. And you know from last year that I was not shy about calling meetings um, to reevaluate the situation. And we were very um, lucky in that we did have um, safe schools and we did loosen up, uh, especially regarding sports. So I, I don't foresee that that isn't going to change going forward as many opportunities as we can to get together and reevaluate the situation. I think that's fine. So thank you, Bob. Go ahead. Bob, I'd like to say something. Yeah, Bill, go ahead. Uh, this is a pretty easy one for me as a school committee member. I, it's absolutely incumbent on me to take any possible method at my disposal to help safeguard the students in the school. What the gentleman said before about the scarlet letter on the back of those who were, if we had just decided to mask people who were unvaccinated, the same is true for people who choose to put a mask on. You put the same scarlet letter on their back because they chose to put the mask on. Peer pressure amongst kids is vicious. And this is our opportunity as school committee members and board of health members to have everyone put a mask on so everyone looks the same and dresses the same and if it's 80% effective, 90% effective, whatever it is, we need to do it. We have to do it. It's our responsibility to do it. Thanks, Bill. I don't have the little, I don't know who has their hand up, but anybody I see Missy. can jump in. Missy, I, think Missy, I think Missy does, Bob. Yep, go ahead, Missy. Uh, there she I, is. I have all sorts of uh, thoughts on this, as you can imagine, but uh, I think that when it comes down to it, this is our responsibility as a community to protect each other. We do this when we ask each other to wash our hands <laughs> and we do this when we cover our mouths when we sneeze. This is a small thing to do to help to protect any potential virus from ourselves going to somebody else. This isn't telling people that their air is toxic. This is a good community health measure to teach our kids to do in this time during this virus so that we can continue to have normal interactions so that we can keep the school open. This is, this is a no brainer. We, we have to have this as part of the school year. Thank you, Missy. Uh, Damien, I see you have your hand up. Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just I'll reiterate really what my other committee members are saying and chime in as well. I mean, I will be the first, especially amongst my personal friends that I've talked to. I, you know, I'm definitely a huge critic of the mask. I hate the mask. I hate going to work with the mask on. I have to wear it on my airline when I go to work. Um, and I want to get rid of the mask as quick as I possibly can. Um, and I've sat here pondering whether, okay, have it in the elementary schools, but not in the frontier. I'm on the frontier board. So it makes the decision kind of difficult. But, you know, at the end of the day, th the safer thing to do is to go to school with the mask on, protect who we are hopefully protecting the, the, the younger kids who don't have the option of wearing a mask or getting vaccinated. You know, as far as the eligible vaccinate, uh, the eligible people who can get a vaccine, you know, I guess that's on them, but, but we have to protect the, the younger kids that don't have that decision, um, who don't have that choice to make. And uh, it, it, at the end of the day, I guess, because of that, it's a pretty easy decision uh, that we should go back with a mask on. And I guess to 
chime in that um, I, I really hope that we can get everyone vaccinated. And I, I do squarely blame this uh, increase in cases on eligible non-vaccinated people. And it really, really upsets me that you won't get vaccinated. Um, and I'm not blaming or um, trying to generalize the people chiming in, but at least from a general consensus, watching the news, reading newspaper articles, the people that are against masks are also the people not getting vaccinated. And it just makes zero sense to me. Um, so, you know, I don't know if we can propose this or not, but I would like to get rid of the mask at some point in school and a way to do it would be to increase our vaccination uh, cases. And if there's a way to, like I think Trevor put it, you know, uh, I don't know, 90%, if we can track the students who are getting vaccinated, then when we get to that, that threshold, we can't mandate a vaccine, but we can certainly say if we get to a threshold, then the mask can come off. And maybe that's a way to do it. I don't know. Thank you, uh, Damien. Ms. C, do you have, a, you have an, another comment? Unmute yourself. Sorry, my box. I'm sorry, <laughs> but that sounded an awful lot like blackmail with the threshold and removing the masks. I'm sorry, this is for uh, committee members. Missy, go ahead. Sorry, my box kept moving around and I only have one arm. So, <laughs> um, I, so I, I'm, I think that the vaccination number is, I think that that is really helpful, but I think that just having that vaccination number, I'm a little cautious. And, you know, I think this is for another meeting down the road, but I think we'll see the impact of that va vaccination status with the numbers. And I think we have to have those numbers drive the decision, not just the vaccination status. Um, because of what we have seen with some breakthrough cases here, even in, amongst people who are vaccinated. And I, I just wanna bring up a point to, to argue in favor of vaccination and that uh, I know of a local hospital whose census has doubled in the last couple of weeks and 80% of those cases are from folks who are not vaccinated. So the people who are ending up in the hospital with this are the folks who, who aren't vaccinated. Um, so, and you know, it's a simple thing to do to help to keep yourself out of harm's way. Thank you. Keith, you had a comment? Yeah, I came to this meeting uh, absolutely not wanting to, to, to vote for a mask mandate. I, um, my kids certainly don't want it. Uh, I live about 15 minutes from Provincetown in the summer. That, that exploded. That's what's driving a lot of this data. And I firmly believe that Provincetown on the 4th of July is not replicated in our four towns. The rates are really low in our four towns. Um, I did not want to start the year in this. I have to wear masks in all my jobs this summer. Um, I, I'm really resistant to it, but there's no way that I can overlook four boards of health recommending this. I think that speaks volumes. So uh, I think that we need this. It's the masks do reduce spread, and I think it's the smartest thing that we can do. And, and I really do think four boards of health recommending that speaks volumes. Um, is there any other? Uh, oh, Olivia, go ahead. Um, hi, I just want to um, reiterate and, and confirm. I know a lot of people have said the same thing. You know, masks are super inconvenient. I have to wear one each day. It is no fun. I hate the heat too. Um, they do make it hard to read. It's you can't read people's lips. It's hard to um, read their facial expressions. Um, they get caught on your glasses. Your glasses get flung off. It's distracting. And the people who are saying that um, making a mandate is taking away their choice to not wear a mask are correct. I mean, it, it would take away their choice not to wear a mask. But I think um, for me, um, the important thing is, could I live with myself if something happened to just one five-year-old because their older sister you know, was in school or, you know, would we have to shut down ODNS and um, small world because one, you know, something happened, even if young kids aren't transmitting it as often, they are getting it. 
and they're not vaccinated. And we, it's our job, I feel it's my job. I shouldn't say it's ours, I should speak for myself. It is my job to protect them. Um, and I just really feel like um, the boards of health are on the right path here um, to making it um, so that everyone is on the same page um, in the schools, um, at least for the start. And I'm all for getting rid of it. Um, please, please, let's get rid of this mask mandate at some point, but we do need to wait um, until it's safe. And um, I also just need to recognize, I wanna thank Diane for speaking up. So, thank you. Thank you. Is there any other thank school you. committee there person? Other Carol, I wanted to say one little thing. Sure, Bob. Um, it's not only our, it's not only wearing masks for our kids, it's to protect the teachers and the other workers that work in the school. I mean, they're older, they're more susceptible to getting the virus if they don't have, have their shots. So, you know, wearing a mask not only protects themselves, the kids, it also protects the teachers and other workers in our schools. I agree, we, and the, so. ultimately the whole thing is to keep the schools open I think it's critical from a mental health point of view, but just everybody, there's no question that the schools need to be open. And if you have no staff or kids are quarantining that, you know, nobody wants to go back to hybrid. Nobody wants to go back to remote. And so that's why we're supporting this. I hate masks as a, everybody else does. Um, Carolyn? Yes. Um, so, um, I don't, I don't quite know. So I guess Conway's not really vote. I, I don't know. There's no board, of, no board of health quorum and no school committee quorum. I understand. Um, well, but I'm, um, but I'm my, here. But well, Phil, I'm going to let you comment. But I think what we're going to do, Deerfield will vote. Then I will invite the other, um, both Sunderland and Waitley, who do have a quorum to vote. Um, and then the school committees um, can have a discussion and vote on their own. Uh, or take further discussion. Um, they, so having no quorum is not really an issue, except at some point, um, someone should uh, have call a meeting for Conway to vote. So, may, I, may I inquire about the language that you used in your motion? So, be, because oh. my, under, my understanding, so, and I'm just, is there a difference between the what your motion and what the current existing policy is in the Union 38 schools well, from last I, year? I am trying to support the continuation of the current policy. Um, what Deerfield, what my motion was, was the Deerfield Board of Health, which oversees Deerfield Elementary and Frontier. My motion was the Deerfield Board of Health would require masks indoors for all students and staff at the Deerfield Elementary School and Frontier Schools, with the exceptions in the current policy that allows for medical and special needs um, exemptions. Well, that is the, that, that was what was in effect at the end of the school year, correct? I believe so. Um, is Darius on? Um, Darius, would you like to address that? I'm here. Yep, I'm here. Hear me all right. I'm sorry, we lost internet at the school. Go figure. Um, so I'm going through my phone here. So hopefully you can hear me okay. Can you hear me oh. okay? Yes, yes, Darius, we can. No? We can't see your face very well. Um, go ahead. Yes, okay, sorry, thank you. Um, so basically we ended the, basically we ended the school year by not, um, by leaving the policy open because we knew we were going to address it in August. So there is a current policy in place of baby agenda this evening. There's an updated policy that just tweaks a little bit of the language, but basically again, um, by allowing us to go off a of policy, it allows us those who have medical and those who um, who have learning disabilities, who have trouble with mask wearing can be addressed um, instead of saying everyone has to be, um, we were able to make exceptions within our rules at the school. So that, that's why um, Carolyn's making the recommendation to run off of our policy that gives us that window um, to meet those those individual needs of students who, who um, you know, may not, you know, may have medical conditions or an IEP um, where they're unable to wear a mask. Also, um, we I also want to encourage the school to continue um, mass breaks, having as the classes outside as much as possible where it wouldn't be required to have masks. Um, 
to just do what they were doing so successfully last year. Um, yeah, you know, Karen, and I apologize because I got bounced off right at the right at the key moment. You know, um, so yes, that is the plan. We learned a lot about outdoor education, um, not only the joys of it, um, but um, the teachers have have figured that out. And so there is going to be a lot of outdoor outdoor time. There is also going to be at the same time where because we're masked and such, we're going to be able to start doing small group work. Um, our spacing in the building is is three feet um, when or more when 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 that can happen. So um, you know, following those recommendations there, but with the mask. So um, you know, always possible. But we're going to try to do all the things we did last year, the clean regiments as well, um, and such. And you know. We're getting all the HVAC cleaned as we as we did last year. Um, new filters put in, all those good things as well. So we're doing all those X's and O's as we did in January, uh, June rather, um, to start off the school year. Um, Phil, is there anything else that you would like to say? Um, because there is not uh, very many people from Conway. Yeah, um, sorry about that, everybody. I um, I can only do so many things, um, but you know that. I would say that con you know all, all along during this Conway has had slightly better di numbers than than the rest of the, the towns and um, we 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 had just spent enough extended weeks with zero cases. If this if this vote had been just a few weeks ago, I would have voted to make masks um, voluntary or uh, for the you know or, or for the for the vaccinated and. Um, uh, and uh, you know, I, but I, it, it has ticked up. And in the past week, I, I know someone said Conway is zero cases. Conway is two cases, and um, and that's just in the past week. Or so I think um, this would be an inauspicious occasion to greet that news with relaxation of the current policy. Um, but but I'm I'm open to looking at it a lot sooner. And 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 I would anticipate that once again Conway would have the best numbers because we are the social distancing kings. Um, and, uh, and, you know, so, um, you know, that's, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that at least for, as Conway goes, we're going to be doing it sooner than two months. Um, but we'll see. We'll, we'll review this as soon as somebody wants to review it, we can review it. Uh, it certainly is my feeling too. Um, Okay, if we're done with school committee comments, then um, I would like, oh. Carolyn, could I make a 10 second uh, a comment because the people had referred to my article. Could I just uh, briefly say that I was not aware of its retraction, the JAMA article. I was not aware of its retraction. I simply quoted it in good faith. I've read dozens and dozens and dozens of articles. I can't always know which has been retracted. Its main issue, its core issues, I would say, have been echoed in many other scientific studies. So please, my apologies if that was retracted. I certainly did not know it, and I just want to make that clear. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, Karen, Karen. this is Caitlin. Um, there's one thing I want to make absolutely clear. Out of all the scientific and everything else, there is one thing I can't ever say anything to is that everybody's emotions and feelings are absolutely 100% accurate and true. I believe everything that you all believe, if that makes sense. <laughs> you know, you, I know that people are speaking from their hearts and I don't, no one is here purposefully deceiving anybody. And you're all here for your children and for your families. And I get that. So please do not think that any of our boards of health or our school boards think that anyone here is purposefully doing anything. I happen to be a footnote checker. I check every footnote on every letter that comes to me. So that's how I got that. But I don't expect everybody to do that. <laughs> But it's okay, and I do not believe anyone is doing anything intentionally. Okay. Thank you, Caitlin. Erica, um, I see your hand up. Uh, yes, you thank you. Yes. Hi. Um, I I wasn't first. I just kind of had a question whether every school committee member was were you were you opening it up to any of us now, or were you going school by school? 
Well, I, I was just trying to get anybody that wanted to comment um, to make a comment before we voted oh, as sure. the Yorkville Board of Health. And then I was going to invite um, Sunderland and Waitley who have quorums to also vote if they choose to tonight. And then um, ask if the, any school committees wanted to vote or, uh, or post another meeting. Okay. Okay. So, then, uh, yeah. It is, uh, there's so many Chairman, committees yeah. that it's kind of awkward. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Understood. So, Wait, there's someone else. Ahead, no, go ahead, Erica. Okay. Okay, Ken. Yeah, no, I was um, really just, just going to, um, you know, uh, say that I, I am in agreement um, with, uh, as, as someone pointed out, you know, four boards of health are, are, are advocating for this and that's that I would be looking at, you know, what that's are the... It's, that yeah. shouldn't be impending the spinal cord. Well, there's okay. someone that's not muted. Okay, gotcha. Um, anyway, that, uh, you know, I, I support this measure um, and, uh, you know, Trevor, I think said some, you know, kind of really captured some of my feeling about it is that, at least from my understanding that, that masks work when everyone participates because it's not, um, you know, but I, 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 I just feel that it's, it is important, you know, that we, that as we think about the children in our schools and doing best for them, we have to make sure that we are taking care of everyone um, and, and doing, you know, the protection. And yes, I couldn't, I couldn't live with myself if I thought that I was in danger possibly by, by not doing, um, the most protective thing, um, to, to advocate for all of the, um, sorry, I'm getting a little tongue tied here, but anyway, that I, you know, I, I, I have to, I'm thinking about all of the children and the ones who are immunocompromised and who, um, have other family members who might be, um, and just, you know, um, it, to me, it, it is equivalent to, you know, what do you need to do to, um, as a community do to, um, uh, ensure the health of all of us, uh, something that, you know, something that I often th have been thinking about during this whole year of dealing with COVID is, um, I've, I've made a, a few trips to Japan through work and um, there a lot of people wear masks and on their their day-to-day -day, and this is pre-COVID um, and I had asked somebody that I worked with I'm like why do you you know what what's the mask thing about and they said that it's because uh, sometimes if they have allergies or if they have a cold and they said it's because if I do this then it's going um, I'm I'm doing this for the sake of my fellow, my fellow citizens here, that it's something to protect them as well as myself. And so, um, you know, I guess I look at it that way that yes, there's some protective benefits to me and I've been able to find masks that are comfortable that don't fog my glasses. I wear three times a bunches of glasses because I have a bunch of things going on with my eyes. Anyway, I do things to make it as comfortable as possible for myself um, and, uh, and it seems to work. And my, 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 my daughter does, you know, does, um, is, is in school at their field and, and, you know, we're, yeah, we're not, we're not thrilled about having to wear them, but we, we see it as, as our kind of civic duty to do things to help our, our fellow, you know, for any of the folks, um, you know, that we encounter because I don't want anyone else to get sick, um, for any reason. Um, so if there's something I can do to help that, then that's why I would, um, as a, as, as a person and as a school community member. Um, and I, I, I think that, oh yes, this is the last thing was that I did want to, I did want to echo, um, Diane's, um, comment, um, that, you know, we can under, we, we can think we know what, um, other people's experiences are of things like slavery, but, um, you know, it is, it's, it's, a strong statement to make to um, believe, uh, you know, I, I think that if, you know, by reading accounts of what people who were enslaved went through, um, it's, I, I don't think it's the same thing. And it, and it, and it, and it is, is an offense. It is something that I can find offensive um, to hear someone make those 
sim try to make those similarities if they haven't actually experienced that. And actually, I don't know if the woman who made the statement has experienced something like this, but um, you know, that is the kind of thing that, that, that we have, that a person might be offended by that because it's, uh, because we may have family or ancestors who have, have lived through these things and have read uh, accounts of it. And um, it was horrific. Um, it's nothing like, at least from my understanding, it's nothing like mask wearing. So I just wanted to, to put that out there that I, you know, um, just want to, just want to say that. So anyway, um, I think that's enough. Thanks. Thank you, Erica. Oh. Really appreciate your input. Ken, Carol. did you want to say something? Yeah, I just, um, I did, I did want to say that, um, I certainly would be supportive of the, uh, motion that's been put on the floor um, by you. Um, and in terms of the school committee, we will work to um, continue our efforts to safeguard the, not just the Deerfield Elementary School community, but the community at large. Uh, this is a, I mean, the numbers in Franklin County have consistently been low. It, it's just been a very difficult time for, you know, for everyone involved with these decisions. Um, but I think it, caution is where we need to be. Um, I, I spoke last year when we were talking hybrid versus remote and all of the options that were being considered and, uh, you know, uh, supported a plan that would get us back in school as quickly as possible. And, you know, we worked very hard, the administration, the faculty, the staffs, everyone involved with the, the schools in our four communities worked to get back into school face-to-face -face last year as quickly as possible. And we were one of the first communities in this area of the Commonwealth to uh, be back in school face-to-face. Uh, -face. So uh, I would expect that this decision tonight will also be treated in the same manner and we would be looking to get, uh, you know, get things modified as quickly as possible. I, I want to see, personally want to see what happens with the, the Labor Day surge. I think we've already been through Memorial Day, but uh, the Labor Day surge uh, possibilities and, and just see. So to get a few weeks under our belt and see where we're at. Um, and I encourage the boards of health to, to continue to monitor the way you have in the past year. That's it, thank you. Thank you, Ken. Um, if there are, I know, I thought there was Carrie on uh, somewhere that had their hand, her hand up, but yes, okay. I did. I'll just be very brief. Uh, Carrie at Joel's Deerfield School Committee. Um, I, we were so lucky. We live in an area with low rates, thanks to good vaccination rates, thanks to mask wearing throughout this. Why would we squander that by, by not having masks, a mask mandate in school? Um, I just, it would be so frustrating to feel like we're taking a back step there. And where we have the luxury of starting school a few weeks after other districts, other regions in the country. And we've seen schools, with districts with thousands of kids quarantined. I really would like to avoid that. Anything we can do to help that seems like a great idea. Thank you to the boards of health for your thoughtful decision. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I, do, I do wanna say as soon as we, as soon as possibly we can, we will be having clinics at the elementary school for the under 12s. And um, we are going to have to figure out a way um, to separate the kids and, and, and we'll work with our EDS uh, emergency dispensing plans that we have come up in the past and we'll you know pursue that. We had a very successful clinic at Frontier. We had almost 300 kids done. Um, you know, the 12 to 16 year old kids, and it was, it was wonderful. So um, I, I just want to say that we're, we're going to make every effort to make sure that the kids are safe and that the schools will remain open and hopefully we can eliminate mass. Um, if there are no more comments from the school committees or the boards of so, health. So uh, Carolyn, yeah. Carolyn, just, just go, I just want to go circle back to the language of, of your motion, because sure. I, I do think that I do think my, my preference, my strong preference would really be that it would just, um, the motion would be to have it continue, to the, affirm the continuance of the Frontier Union 38 policy from last year. Um, well, um, my, my understanding, Phil, the only reason I'm, I'm leaving it, um, all, requiring all masks indoors is because my understanding is that the school committee um, is going to tweak the policy. So if we vote now, 
and then the policy changes that might be uh, a little bit different. So, um, I, and Darius, um, I mean, if you could pipe in on this, I think by having the Deerfield Board of Health require masks indoors for all students and staff in, at the Deerfield Elementary School and Frontier School, with the exceptions in the current policy that allows for medical and special needs students, I though I my understanding is that section is not being um, tweaked at all. So we could refer to that, and that's why I'm referring to that. Because because Darius mentioned a couple specific specific other narrow like little things besides those two little things that you mentioned as exceptions. Um, um, Darius, are you on? Or, or maybe here. Bob. Oh, okay. So Darius. Okay. I'm here. Um, okay, so um, yeah, so we, we, like I said, we currently have a masking policy in place. I did put one in front of the school committee that was updated from the Massachusetts Association of School Committees. It just tweaks some of the language for easier reading um, and um, you know, the guidance statements it's pulling from and such. So it does still leave the, 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 the language in there that in addition, mask, coming, mask or face coverings will not be required for anyone who has medical behavior or other challenging challenges, making it unsafe to wear a mask or face covering. A, note, a written note from a physician is required for requested exemptions. Parents may not excuse their child from face mask requirement by signing a waiver. So it's the same, that's, that's the language we need as an educational institution to um, make sure we're, re we're making sure we're meeting all the needs of our students. So that's why instead of just saying required masks in school systems, I need to have some language in there so that we can meet those students' needs. And mm -hmm. that's why I said with the exceptions in the current policy that allows for medical and special needs students. Um, is that okay, Phil, or do you want to discuss it some more? So, so, but that is basically the current policy in its totality. So um, rather than the whole... But first of all, the whole Deerfield Board of Health thing um, orders and it's this the schools when, when we're all sort of in accord already. I don't really understand why you're doing that. But oh, um, the reason why, Phil, we have to we all have to individually vote. Deerfield um, is Deer, is in Deerfield Board of Health because the Deerfield Elementary is in Deerfield and Frontier is in Deerfield. We may, we vote for Deerfield and Frontier. Then Waitley will vote for Waitley Elementary. Sunderland will vote for Sunderland. And then when you, your Board of Health will have to have, um, have to post a meeting and vote for the policy um, in Conway. Okay. I think right. what but Phil is saying, be because I had a conversation with him is that he is saying that, why is the Board of Health exercising its power to mandate mask in school when the school committee has agreed that it's going to continue its policy um, of that? I think that's what he's saying. Am I correct, Phil? Oh, that is correct. Thank you. Well, I, I think um, we want mass general laws behind um, the, I mean, I feel more comfortable if, as a Board of Health member if we vote it as a Board of Health member and we have mass general laws supporting our powers of Board of Health. Okay. Thank you. It's okay, Phil. I'll talk to you offline on this. All right. I think you can agree to disagree. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, it's not disagree. I, you know, I work we're, because we're all like agreeing. But, um, but I, I, I you know, I, I think may, may, maybe we would benefit from like a greater coordination in advance or whatever of of agendas. And I don't, I don't know. Just, but well, there's there's five Anyways. school committees and four boards of health, so it is exactly. It is, I know a little bit. So I try okay. so hard to make sure people communicate and I communicate with as many people as possible. Carolyn, um, Jessica Corwin has her oh. hand up. Oh, Jessica, go ahead. Thanks, I'll try to keep this really quick. Um, I've got three things. One is just that a year ago, I was a strong advocate for remote learning because I thought at the time that masks were going to be really disruptive in classrooms and they'd be a major impediment to learning. And I learned last year, they really are not in practice on the ground. It doesn't interrupt classes. I know that from my kids and from the 15 classes that I taught in an elementary school last year. Uh, the second thing is that we have lots of kids. I don't know exactly how many, but we do have kids in our schools um, who are at high risk of severe COVID due, due to underlying conditions. And 
They are entitled to a free and appropriate education in a safe environment and masks work. Um, and then the third thing is just, I simply want to condemn the comment, making a false equivalence between slavery and masking. That's all, thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Okay, um, what we're gonna do now is the Deerfield Board of Health will vote. Um, uh, we have a motion and a second. Um, Dave are, and Trevor, are you there? Yeah. I'm um, here. Yes. Trevor and Dave, can you both uh, roll call vote, please? Yep. Aye, Trevor McCann. Dave Wolfram, aye. Aye, Carolyn Ness. It has passed unanimously. Um, Caitlin, would you like to uh, roll call vote um, a motion for the Sunderland Board yes. of Health? Um, I'll make a motion to require masks indoors at the Sunderland Elementary School building in the town of Sunderland. Uh, and that would be for staff, students, and visitors, anyone inside of the school building, with the exceptions for medical and special needs um, on a case-by-case -case basis, which would be in accordance with the Union uh, 38 uh, policy. Uh, and that can be uh, attached to our, um, if it is approved, attached to the minutes. Uh, when we when we get that. That is my motion. Is there a second? Second. Bruce Bennett seconds the motion. Um, all in favor on the Sunderland Board of Health say aye. Bruce and Bennett aye. Bruce Bennett aye. Caitlin Rock aye. Thank you, Caitlin. Is Ken Kushai here? Ken was there, I thought. He was. Go. Okay, well, it's 2-0, so the motion passes. Thank you very hey, much. Caitlin, can you just keep us updated weekly on the Maven? And, oh, and so absolutely. We going on? Yep, absolutely, and we can revisit this. Um, I'll, it'll definitely be updated every, I'm not gonna do it Monday, I'll, I'll do it like a uh, probably a Tuesday or Wednesday, so that's yeah. back in session. As long as it's on a weekly basis, so we can keep up to see whether it's going up, down, what's happening. And absolutely, then we can and I'm, there. I'm in touch with the superintendent and I'm in touch with the school nurse pretty regularly. So we will um, we'll get on a good trend. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Caitlin. Fran, uh, would you like the Waitley Board of Health to vote tonight? Sure. Let me make a motion similar to Caitlin's uh, that the Waitley Board of Health uh, will require masks indoors in the Waitley Elementary School with exceptions cited for medical reasons and uh, special needs, and um, based on a periodic review of the cases, COVID cases and disease risks. Do I hear a second? Mike Archibald on the board, Whaley Board of Health, I'll second that motion. Okay, let's take a vote. All in favor? This is Mike Archibald, Mike. And aye. Fran Fortino, aye. Passes. Uh, two to zero. So, thanks. thank you, Fran. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, there is no Conway Board of Health quorum, and um, I don't know if any school committees would like to make a vote of anything. I do know that the Frontier Regional School Committee has uh, a couple other agenda items they'd like to address. Bob, would you like to um, do I that think, now? Yeah. We could be on, we could be the first school. I mean, I can make the motion um, and piggyback on the Board of Health. Uh, Judy, are you on? Hello, Judy. Yeah, I'm here, Bob. Thanks. Did you get the motion of everybody else so I don't have to say it? So, hang yeah. on, hang on. All right, I got to do kind of a point of order here. Thank you. So, okay. You, you guys already have a policy in play that has masks extending from January, from June, okay? So you really don't need to do any vote. However, I did put a updated policy in front of you that tweaks some of the wording as recommended by MASC. So the school committee is not voting like the, and I know this is confusing for people, but it's, you guys have different things you're voting on. You're voting on the MASC policy update, which includes masking indoors. Okay, and with the exceptions listed there that I sent out as part of the packet. So I would prefer if you're gonna do a vote, you vote that policy so we have an up-to-date policy. 
If you choose not to vote a policy, we'll just run one what we did in June. It doesn't change operations by, by any stretch of any, of any means within that policy. Okay, it's just a little bit clearer from MASC's recommendation. Oh, it's ready. So yeah. with that said, we yeah. got to keep the same policy. No, I, the, the, the MASC update did not change the policy in any significant way. It just no. clarified, you know, a, a, a little bit. I think that it's, it's the same. It's, you know, so I don't, I guess the, the vote, the motion would be to adopt that policy then the new clarifying language. Otherwise we would be doing nothing. It's, it sounds right. crazy, Phil. You're exactly right. I did it this way because the public is going to want the school committee to acknowledge that masking is there a change or isn't there a change. You could have not had a meeting at all and said, we're just going to follow, follow last spring's policy, but did not discuss it and have a discussion. That's why I put it there for that way. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, move to accept the updated policy. I'll second that, Olivia. Uh, roll call, Bob Halla? Yes. Bill Smith? Yes. Keith McFarland? Yes. Olivia Leone? Yes. Judy Pierce, yes. Damien? Yes. Lynn? Yes. Mary? Yes. Missy? Yes. Bill? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, um, so from the Union 38 side, we will vote these individually by town. Um, so I, I will start for the town of Deerfield. And, and yeah, and for motion. the record, all people can vote on this because it is a policy. Correct. So you're actually, you can do the roll yes. call votes for all the towns for expediency, but um, all except Conway can vote that this evening. Right. I, I, think, I think Elaine might be on now. I'm here now, Darius. Okay. There okay. she is. So Conway needs to convene its meeting Better before it can that. vote. So go ahead. <laughs> I hope uh, Judy's taking uh, notes tonight. I am taking notes, but you guys did it all backwards. I'm just going to say, never again. Five <laughs> meetings is Union 38. It is not individual school committees. Yeah. <laughs> that's the way Donna presented it to me. So that's the way we're doing it. It was reposted, yes. But <laughs> anyways. <laughs> But I'm glad to know Elaine's here, so I'll take her off the absent list. All righty. Good. Glad I made you happy. <laughs> it's his little things, Elaine. So, um, but let me let me start with Deerfield. And I would entertain, entertain a motion to uh, approve the revised um, policy EBCFA as, um, as revised. Mm -hmm. And I would make that motion. Carrie. Do we have a second? Second. Mary, second. Um, any further discussion? Glad it's not in person. So, and hearing no further discussion, <laughs> roll call vote. Ken, is, Ken cut it back, yes. Um, <clears throat> David Sharp? Yes. Erica Jacob? Yes. Mary Raymond? Yes. Carrie Etchells? Yes. Thank you. Um, we can move on to, why don't we move on to Waitley? Or Sunderland, I'm sorry. Greg, are you there, Gregory? Yes, I am. All you right, uh, is there a motion to uh, approve the recommended, uh, or the MASD recommended EBCFA uh, face covering policy? Yes, I'll move it. Jessica. Jessica, yep. Second? I second it, Peter. Peter, all right. Any discussion? All right. Uh, Jessica? Yes. Uh, Megan? Yes. Peter? Yes. Keith? Yes. Greg, yes. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, Waitley? Okay, do I hear a motion to accept the updated EBCFA face policy? So move. Second. Second. Roll call, Bob? Yes. Beth? Yes. Maureen, yes. Okay, thank you. 
Thank you, Waitley. Um, so we move to Conway and uh, Darius, I don't know what, mm. well, they can vote the policy, the masking policy what revisions, but they'll have to wait on a board of health. I mean, ultimately it would be. So correct. And for those watching, they're saying like, wow, this seems like a big mess. It's because the state said this is a local decision. So either school committees are voting that's it right. or boards of health are voting it. We just happen to be a very unique community that's doing it all together. So Conway can vote this and that's what will stand for the opening of the school year as I understand it. But the board of health can do a meeting to confirm they're in agreement with the other town's boards of health, which I would of hope they would do. So can, so can I have a motion then to- um... You have to convene the meeting first. Okay, I uh, open the meeting at, I don't even know what time it is, 36 p.m. Yeah. All righty, so now the meeting is open. Can I have a motion to accept the EBCFA face covering policy from Conway? Is there anybody else here? I'll, I'll make a motion. I'm Michael. Oh, yeah, I'm, great. I'm Michael. Sarah. Thanks, Michael. Okay, I'll make a, second. I'll make the motion here. And I'll second it. All righty. And roll call. Uh, Michael? Yes. Phil? Yes. And I also agree. So Conway is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you Michael. all. Thank you, everyone. Um, I think Frontier has uh, a couple other items on their agenda, maybe. Would, Carolyn, sure. if I if I could yeah. just interject, um, it is eight thirty seven p.m. We have a number of public and um, also committee members. I don't. I think it would be remiss of me if I didn't suggest that perhaps the un, the Union thirty eight school committees could adjourn at this stage. Oh, okay. No, I intend that. I just my my understanding was there was a uh, frontier had. Um, they they have frontier has a couple more things to discuss but i don't they think the union 38 committees are participating in that discussion so i'd like to see if we could get an adjournment of the union 38 yeah. committees okay that's fine i'll so make I, that motion elaine is making a motion for the union 38 meeting to adjourn i'll second jessica elaine and jessica and we will go through a quick roll call vote. Um, any discussion? I'm not hearing any, I don't think. So we'll go through a roll call vote, starting with Conway, Elaine Campbell. Yes. Michael Merritt. <clears throat> yes. Still there. Phil Cantor. I, I suppose so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you so do. So school committee, yes. Gregory Goshawk. <laughs> yes. Peter Gagarin. Yes. Megan Ar Arkeen. Ar Arquin. Arquin, yes. thank you. <laughs> Keith McFarland. Thank yes. you, Megan. And Jessica Corwin. Yes. Deerfield School Committee. Ken Cutterback, yes. David Sharp. Yes. Erica Jacob. And this is a question to adjourn the meeting? This is a question for the <laughs> Union 38 committees to adjourn, yes. Yes, okay. I yes. agree. Okay, Mary Raymond. Yes. Gary Etchells. Yes. Okay, that's unanimous. And last, Waitley School Committee, Maureen Nichols. Yes. Robert Halla. Yes, sir. Bethany Riley. Yes. Thank you all for your attendance this evening and uh, and for your your <clears throat> your work for the schools. Thanks, on everybody. To the, on to the start of the school year. Thank you. Good all night, right. all. Thank you. Thank you. Stay on. Good Frontier night. reps, stay on, please. Uh, uh, this is Caitlin Rock from the Sunderland Board of Health. Um, I just have one point of order for the uh, recording. I got a, received a phone call from Ken Kushai, who was on but could not mute, unmute himself. He did vote to uh, require uh, a yes vote for requiring masks indoors. Um, so it is a 3 0 vote. He was on and he voted yes. Um, I would move to adjourn the Sunderland Board of Health meeting. Second. Thank you, Bruce. Um, all in favor? Aye. Bruce Bennett, aye. Caitlin Rock, aye. 
Does anyone else need the Sunderland Board of Health at this meeting tonight? No, thank you, Caitlin, very much. And thank YouTubers and- It's adjourned as of 8.40 PM. Thank, thank you. you all. You all have been wonderful. Thank you. Carolyn, and I would make the same motion for the Board of Health and Wheatley to adjourn. I don't know if Mike is still here. We may be adjourned already. <laughs> Is Mike, Mike, are you on? Oh, he might've gotten off. He might've gotten off. Well, so that's okay. Um, oh, Fran, I'll get off too. Unanimous. Okay, <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Fran. Um, the Deerfield Board of Health is, is uh, as select board is going to continue the meeting after Frontier finishes their business. Thank I you. Going? Thank you, Fran. Go ahead, Bob. Thank you. We have one little uh, last thing. Darius, do you want to fill us in on it? Or sure. I apologize for making the Deerfield Board of Health um, do this. And I apologize to the Frontier Committee for making this a long meeting. However, um, what I'd like um, this the you know, there was public comment before it on this. This idea is mine. You can you can direct that toward me. Um, basically, we have the ability to pool test students. We have been pool testing students across you know, the, the whole last year. Um, it allows us to um, get an indicator of what's going on um, you know, with people with COVID, active COVID um, symptoms in our building. Last year, we did pick out cases with that, and there was no transmission um, from detected cases in our school district from that. Um, what I'm proposing is that we cannot mandate pool testing among students. Um, but we can require it amongst those who are participating in extracurricular activities and athletics. And I want to give the reasons why I'm, I'm pushing this forward um, that you, you consider this. You know, athletics, um, they are unmasked right now. Uh, according to the MIA today, they did vote not to mask students um, and continue with the that thing. Students who are doing athletics, um, what I'm kind of, kind of coining it as, it's like um, swab and save the season. Because what happens is if you have somebody with, with a Delta variant on a Monday, practicing until a Thursday with mild symptoms, that entire team could get infected. And what this is actually doing is it's saving some athlete the other side of having to feel the guilt of I had COVID and I gave it to my teammates and I just took out the starting lineup. Or I just took out the, the play rehearsals, you won't be able to rehearse for two weeks or you know those kind of things. And so. That is the idea behind this. I brought it up. There was a coaches meeting today at 530. I ran down there before I ran here. They were 100% in agreement across the room about it. It's the right thing to do. You join a team, you have responsibility to one another. And um, it's a simple procedure. It will not be tested as a team. They would just simply are enrolling into the, um, into the program and they'll be tested along with other classmates um, as we do it. You know, this will increase our overall school testing. And there is also, when someone says, what's your agenda here? My agenda is to get back to school without masks. And I'm thinking that the one way we're going to be able to do it is increase pool testing to show that we don't have COVID in our building when the rates around us are low. So this is going to be able to build up um, our capacity to be able to do this and how we do this. And with a group that really should be doing it. Last year, a neighboring football team lost I think their entire season, I'm not sure Scott, if they got one game in or not, but they lost their entire season because the way COVID rippled through their team. Um, and, and so for those seniors, they lost their football season. And so this is, I mean, it's really, when someone kind of put it out as like me forcing this upon people, I want you to look at it from a different perspective. It's about saving seasons. It's about knowing that the person next to you, because our varsity athletes, they share rides together. They share hugs together. It's not just about what happens on the playing field. They are a unit. Um, that's what makes those those things so special um, at all levels. And so um, that is why I'm putting it before you. I think it's a straightforward vote on that. Um, it is late in the evening. If you want to put it to another school committee meeting, we can schedule something next week. But that's that's my thought on that. And I'm open to on that. Uh, Darius, you want to tell them, I think we have, we're not the only school that's done, is trying to do this. There's, there's a couple other schools. You want to name those couple schools that you told me? East Hampton actually did it last spring and was successful. They said, uh, according to their superintendent, they, they did what, there was no complaint. Everybody kind of bought into it. So um, I don't know if you'll see other schools doing it as well. Um, I did, you know, spread, I did tell the superintendent I was initiating this um, discussion. Thanks. 
Bob, I'd like to make a motion. Well, okay, you got the motion. And do we have a, I see your hand, Lynn. We'll just get the motion in a second. And I'll second that. Come on, Lynn. <laughs> We got a motion to second. I'll be right back. We can talk about it. I'm bleeding like a stuck pig over here. I am disgusted. I am disgusted. What are you talking about? Lynn, did you go somewhere? I think she has she a medical She cut her emergency. finger, so she went to go get a baby. Okay. <laughs> Does anybody else? have anything they want to share with us on this motion? No. I don't know if, if our insurance not, covers injury during a, a virtual meeting. Lynn, <laughs> Lynn, you could talk now. Classic paper so, cut. Lynn, you want to unmute? Oh, there you go. Go ahead, Lynn. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. I tried to hang her doll on the chair, and when I tried to save her, she gashed me a good one, and I'm bleeding like a stuck pig over here. And then there was nobody to get me a band aid. That's all. Okay. Okay. We're good. So we have a motion in a second. Is there anybody else that wanted to chime in? Yeah, just Bob, I would just say that the pool testing thing is there. I, I, I'm, I, I think that's a, a, um, a, a really strong suggestion that, you know, the more data points we can give our, our you know, the, the, the healthcare team that's part of the, you know, the health team that's part of our administration, um, the more insight we have into what's going on in the school and the sooner we can move to no masks. Um, and, you know, and that's, you know, my, I, I know we, we haven't heard today from Meg Birch, um, but, uh, you know, I, yeah, um, um, but I, you know, she's, I, I think we all, we all really value her contribution to what's going on. So. Thanks, Phil. Okay. So we have a motion and a second and Judy, you want to do a roll call, please? I do, Bob. Yes. Phil Smith. Yes. Keith. Is Keith still with us? Yes. Great, thank you, Keith. Uh, Olivia? Yes. Judy, yes. Damien? Yes. Lynn? Yes. Yes. Mary? Yes. Missy? Yes. Phil? Yes. Great. Thank you, everybody. Now we just got to adjourn. Are we all done? No, we just need a motion to adjourn. Let me make a motion. Move to adjourn, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Phil. So me second. I'll second it. Yeah. Roll call. Roll call. Raise your hands. Good job, committee. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for showing up to tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. I want to say thank you, Jennifer. You did a good Jennifer. job with all that. I'm yeah, very really impressed. Really thank you. <laughs> You're a trooper. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I really Judy, thank you for notes on all that chaos. Yeah. Thanks, Carolyn. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Carolyn, and all the other boards of health. Hey. Thank you all. Thank you. Um, I'd like to now turn this uh, Board of Health meeting over to the chair of the Board of Selectmen, Dave uh, Wilson, to do the remainder of our meeting. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dave. <Almost. laughs> okay, so next thing on uh, Flackman Board reports and announcements. I think we got most of that off our chest. Um, I just want to mention that uh, the um, Friends of Deerfield had sponsored on August 8th a wonderful painting of the landscape uh, in Deerfield, and they have another one scheduled uh, with um, Joycelyn uh, Glayback on the 26th of September. You can go online and sign up. It's, it, it's a wonderful event. It's fabulous. Anna Adams did a wonderful job 
um, catering it, uh, putting together a snack for everybody. It was great. It was really a fun time. Yeah. Can I, can I just hit a few uh, quick announcements for the rec department? Uh, just a reminder of soccer uh, 2021. Registrations are Saturday, August 28th. Um, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and Wednesday, September 1st, uh, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. at the, the tent next to the town hall. And uh, skills assessments for third and fourth grade will be September 7th at 5.30 out back here at the town hall. And um, let's see, fifth and sixth graders will be the same September 7th at 6.30. Rain date would be September 8th. Uh, Deerfield soccer for kindergarten. So registrations are Saturday, August 28th from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Wednesday, September 1st from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. in the tent next to the town hall. Uh, play begins on Saturday, September 25th through October 30th at the Old Deerfield ball fields next to the PVMA. Route 5 and 10 in Old Deerfield. Um, Times are 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and it's uh, $60. So, and then the last item is the Pilates exercise class. Dates are September 7th through October 26th on Tuesdays from 5.45 to 6.45 at the Deerfield Elementary School. All levels are, uh, are available. You must pre-register for all classes, no walk-ins. So please get in touch with um, the rec department 665 one four zero zero extension one oh seven or you can email uh sue antonellis at sue a at town dot deerfield dot ma dot us that's it okay hit those quick okay um i just want to let everybody know that things are moving along with the church right now we've got several people uh that are actively involved looking at it uh, i was informed today that i could not solicit directly help. So I have to ask for volunteers through the meeting, uh, people that may be interested in helping us with the construction and remodeling of the church. Uh, if you could uh, submit your names to Casey and what you're willing to do would be well appreciated. Um, even though I'm in hot water because of evidently one of my wife's friends called her and, and informed her that she was decorating the senior center. Uh, and I forgot to mention it to her. So uh, <laughs> it's a cross you have to bear sometimes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're, we're trying to get this going. So we hopefully can have a lot of things done and hopefully get the seniors in that building by the end of September. Okay. So it's a, it's a temporary situation, but, you know, it's uh, right now I don't, you know, uh, the initial reports from the building that they're in did not look real good. So mm -hmm. we'll have to figure out something. So, Thank you very uh, much for doing that, Dave. I got one other quick uh, thing. I, I met with um, Woodard and Kern as an engineer firm just to kind of walk them around town. They were interested in looking at, you know, our projects coming up and giving, giving some help on, um, you know, maybe providing a um, some ideas on what we could do for master plan. You know, we talked about master visioning. So um, very informal, just kind of walked them around, showed them what we were what we were looking at. We would probably need to move forward with a RFP and go out to bid if we want, you know, uh, want to get moving. You know, we, we're thinking maybe Berkshire design as well. So, you know, we have to kind of formalize. I'll work with Casey on formalizing something to kind of get moving on, on that down the road. But um, just wanted to let you know that had that meeting and that walk around. So be curious what they, they have for an idea. Yep. Um, you know, my understanding is, you know, we, uh, for like the senior center, we've got like $42,000 that was voted at town meeting. Unfortunately, Waitley and Sunderland have not voted any money. Yep, not yet. For their, so, yeah. Um, so um, they were hoping for DTLA money, we'll, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Keeping Ford. our fingers crossed. Yes, exactly. Yep. Great. So, okay. Okay. Next thing on the uh, Board of Health reports announcements. Um, 
I just want to I remind think we kind of hit the board of health stuff. Yes, I just want to remind people that we're planning a senior clinic, flu clinic um, on September 30th and uh, October 3rd, we'll have a drive through for um, regular uh, townspeople or anyone that wants to come. Um, I, at this yeah. point, because um, there hasn't been confirmation on the booster shots, we're working on trying to get Moderna available uh, for the drive through on September 30th. But I'm, you know, that's, we're trying, but okay. I cannot say if for sure, if we're gonna do that. Both dates, both September 30th and October 3rd are tentative, um, assuming that we are going to get our flu vaccine. Okay. So um, I know there was a concern about the reporting of COVID in the county uh, with the school boards and everything. And the thought that was going through my mind was that, Carolyn, you probably have more conversations with Maven than you do with your husband. <laughs> well, it, I have to say it's so discouraging to have to check Maven three or four times a day now again. Yeah. Um, but so. we do have the numbers. Um, and yep. there is some potential for clusters, which I hope is not going to happen. So we're just, yep. you know, I have to say we're, it, it, we are still on top of all our contact tracing and um, we, the new, we, we are ha hopefully going to receive some money for a public health nurse to um, do contact tracing for um, Greenfield Montague and Sunderland and us, um, the reason why this, this person is, is covering the, the group of towns is because of the number of kids coming into school choice, Greenfield and Montague. So we really yep. need to turn around the three or four hour turnaround from when the case comes in, we're immediately contacting um, everybody that has come in contact with that case. And I, I think that has really, really helped. Um, and I, I, I know it, it is more expensive, um, but hopefully we'll have some money to offset that with another public health nurse. And also, um, you know, with the vaccinations uh, rate being as high as um, it is in the town, uh, we won't maybe have as many cases. Okay. Okay, uh, the next thing on our agenda is uh, zoning bylaws, the tour tourism and access for municipal facilities. Um, Casey was waiting for feedback from Lisa on these. She, she had it maybe from one of them, I don't know which one. Yes, I did actually, David. I received some information from Lisa right before the meeting earlier this afternoon and Jennifer has it, she can actually do a screen share for us so we can read through it. Could you blow it up so, just a little bit, Jennifer, please? Down the bottom of your screen on the right-hand side, John. Yeah. Yeah, so this would be a proposed you. article for frontage for municipal facilities. And I had a conversation with council and a couple of other folks as we were looking at it, we thought it might be more clear if we said frontage because that's really what it's for. Yeah. And this article would make a change to add a footnote or a superscript, sorry, in the notes section of the dimensional requirements in the table. And so this, after some discussion, this would allow us, I think we've discussed it before, but this would allow town-owned lots used for municipal facilities. It would allow the town, town to do some of the things that we've discussed before. And that's, that ain't, those are things like access for recreational fields, access to create some economic development in the center of town. What mm -hmm. else am I rem not remembering, Trevor? <laughs> no, that's that's exactly it. You know, the, the Leary lot where we want to try and get a one way through there instead of cars coming in and out and eating it all up with traffic lanes instead of parking. Right. Um, you know, when we, we hope to have negotiations with the new owners of Leader, I think it's Hamshaw Lumber, um, 
and, and to discuss with Berkshire Brewing if we can do some economic development to add parking and pocket parks and enhance the, the um, you know, the other side of BBC so that there can be outdoor dining and, and parking and easy access and space to, um, to congregate down, downtown. You could do farmer's markets in there. There's a lot of different things we could do with that empty spot. That was one of the areas we walked the other day too. Um, but with with the purchase of those buildings, the purchase of, of, of leader, you know, those two lots, the old lot that had the house on it, and then the other uh, building, um, you know, got sold, those lots get combined, what's left to get in there? 50 feet. So, um, right. you know, it's just, th these are the kind of things that, you know, that the town needs to get moving on, on some of the projects that the community wants to get economic development, get get, you know, uh, better parking for the businesses downtown and, and maybe uh, the businesses along Elm Street could redevelop the backsides of their building to have more more economic development, more access for, for customers. And, you know, people can go to, you know, Wayne Lasano and get a sub and come out, and have, have, a, have a place to eat it in the park there. You know, the common, you know, we hope to redo the common. So there's other areas as well. You know, um, we don't know what's, you know, it's nice that tanks are coming out of, you um, Cumberland Farms, but there's thoughts about what, what we should do with it, you know, with that right in our center of town, do, do we want to have access to that place? And uh, there's just a lot of areas where, you know, for the public good, we need access in and, and our town is so small and the lots are tight here, we need a little bit more, uh, more access than, you know, 200 feet of frontage, so. And so this would allow us to do this if it was approved to move forward with a positive recommendation by the planning board. Correct. And there is a scheduled meeting to discuss that with them next Monday. So okay. when I circled back around with council, I mentioned that with that to her. Um, she wasn't able to go through the tourism language, but she should be able to get that to us by Friday, which means you could have a more in-depth conversation with planning board about that and really go through it. In um, this case, go ahead, Carolyn. Oh, no, I was just going to say, um, uh, when when you get it on Friday, can you forward it to the planning board so the planning board will have a chance to review it over the weekend? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it, so does everybody, is everybody okay with this, this well, language? Yes. Uh, yep. Oh, for this article, yes. For this okay. article, yeah. Yes. Yes. I, yeah. I did not support um, putting in 25 feet I mean, it's 10 feet now. Why would we? we can and that was what was brought to my attention. Yes, we can do it, but why would you mandatory do it? So, um, well, it could limit our ability to use land like the Braverton lot. Um, the, the, lots, the lots that are, we call it the Braverton land, but it's the land that's, that's directly, what's the direction, Carolyn? I can never tell whether it's northeast. Oh, it's, it's or off Braverton. It's it's actually it's off right, Braverton. Yeah, it's right across the street. Um, it's north of Braverton, e east of Main Street. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I'm not good at that. So yeah, and there's there's other land that we've discussed that we've had conversations about, and I know senior housing's been following up on some of this as well. But I, I think have, there's two lots there on off of Braverton. Yeah, and we had discussed doing various things with it, so I'll be interested to see what other yeah. concepts come up. But this was a request that the board had put to me to make some changes to the language so that we could put it before the planning board and ultimately town meeting to see if they would approve this so that we can facilitate some economic development and other projects in the town. <coughs> yes, thank you. Okay. Um, so you think you're going to forward the um, language to the, for the overlay district um, to us on Friday, right? I'm hoping to have that ready to send out to you and as you instructed the okay. The only, board only well. other, um, you know, I did have a lot of changes to what was proposed, um, but mm -hmm. also I I felt like um, we we should probably include at least the Yankee Candles lots um, in the tourist overlay district. It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So um, I didn't know, Trevor or Dave, if you had um, any ideas on the map, but uh, I feel like the map was too restrictive, really. 
Right. I agree with that. It, it probably, we should think about expanding that a little bit. I have been away on vacation, so I really hadn't had a chance to look at it since okay. our last meeting. Jennifer already did it. Yeah. I just didn't get um, it scanned for you by the end of the day. <laughs> I, help. I had help. Yeah, you know, I was kind of playing. Do you want to see it or no? Um. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. I was kind of contemplating that the west side of uh, 5 and 10, right, right by Treehouse, yep. might be a good area to have that in, too. Absolutely. So on both sides of 5 and 10, and not just one. Yeah. Yep. No, I'm I'm fine with that, Dave. I uh, uh, Because, you know, I don't the, think uh, it... the Young's lot there on the corner of 116 and 5 and 10 technically is the only lot in town that's zoned for adult entertainment oh mm -hmm. i no, i think it's also that one right across the street too that's well oh. i can actually so i i actually was playing around with this and i saw that there was the adult over there so i had karen help me make another map that shows those parcels okay oh so i can share both of those if you want Okay. Why don't you show them to us, Jennifer? Okay. It's um they're large, so I'll have to like you know. Um, yeah, yeah, that's okay. No, that's okay. That's fine. Um, is it is if if my comments that I had sent in to you, Casey, can you forward to Trevor and Dave? I can. I was going to talk to Lisa about them because mm -hmm. she had some questions for me when I had a brief conversation. She had, I asked her if she had had a chance to look at it and she hadn't, she was out of the office. So that I wanted to talk to her, but yeah, I can, I just don't want to create a situation where we might run into some problems. Well, I, I don't think it's a, uh, a violation of the open meeting law by sharing them tonight in our meeting. Um, if you can forward them. Okay. I can forward them. That and that way we can compare it to um, what Lisa comes up with. At least, at least Trevor and Dave will get an idea of what I mean. If there was only a few things, I guess I wouldn't be too much of a problem. But I had quite a lot of changes that I wanted to um, review. Yep. Let me see if I. Okay. This is the first one you showed me, right, yep. Jennifer? Yeah. I so didn't show you the other one. It's actually. So that's Treehouse and Yankee Candle. Correct. Right. Okay. And then the other one is. Well, I mean, ultimately, I'm not like a hundred percent like crazy about any any particular thing, except I just think it's too limited right now. Mm -hmm. So I I would like to see a little bit more. So the ones in the striped, yeah, are the adult. Yes, and that, the yeah, that's the correct one. Um, adult. Yeah. Okay. yeah, this is Yankee. And then the, yeah, the other medical is over here, marijuana. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, so. Okay. So Dave, you're thinking of of including across the street, which would have been those other parcels. I, I guess I'm okay with that. I, I I just feel like it's more, it, we should have more and it certainly include Yankee Candle in this. Um, I mean, it makes sense, but yeah. so, uh, um, why don't we bring it to the planning board and, and let's all yeah. discuss it together. Yep. Yeah, we can put it on the big screen and we can show it better. Right. Okay. 
And I'll send that out, Carol. And I'm trying to get into my computer and I'm having a little bit of difficulty. So I can send that out tomorrow. Yeah, okay. no, that's okay. I'm fine. Okay. And yeah, so my question for you all is, are you ready to push, take a vote to push the frontage for municipal facilities forward and then have a yes. more robust conversation about tourism on Monday with the planning board? Yep. Yes, I'll make yes. that motion. Um, I make a motion to uh, move the municipal access for municipal facilities to the planning board as presented and reviewed. And then also um, continue the discussion of the tourist, tourist overlay district with the planning board. Second that motion, Trevor McDaniel. Oh, K Tr Casey, did you have a- Can you say frontage for municipal facilities? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Frontage access for municipal facilities. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Second that motion, Trevor McDaniel. I don't know if Dave's frozen. He's been having some. So maybe any, any further questions? <laughs> Hearing none. I, Carolyn Ness. I, Trevor McDaniel. Dave, are you voting yes? You can wave. He can't. He had to shut his camera off to try and get some bandwidth there. Um, yeah, I bet it's a bandwidth issue. Yeah, I know he's. He had he had that problem earlier. Yeah. Okay. So would we call that two zero zero? I think at the moment, and we he can we can revote it again at the next at the next meeting on Monday, I guess, right? Yeah, I think are he you, would agree. I, at least Monday? my conversation with him. Right? Yeah. My understanding is Dave is going to. Volume. I can't hear what they're saying. They can hear. Oh, you okay. We can hear you, Dave. Uh, did you vote yes on this? On the front. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. Great. Okay. Okay. So three. Great. Mo uh, motion to adjourn. <laughs> can hear that. I didn't hear that, but not motion to adjourn. Or is there anything else? I don't want to jump it short, but uh, Rocky had a hand up. Uh, actually, I can't entertain anything once the motion to adjourn is on the floor. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm going to withdraw my motion. I can withdraw my motion. Unless you want to withdraw your motion. I have. I've withdrawn my motion because I would love to hear what Rocky has to say. his motion. Okay. Rocky Foley's going to say something. Okay. okay, two things. One, I want to say that uh, yeah. you guys did a fantastic job with this combined meeting between the Board of Health and the school committees. A lot of confusion, but yeah, I think you pulled it off. I Thank think you, you did a Thank good you. job. Now, the other thing is about this 50 foot frontage article. Once we, uh, the planning board approves it and all that, uh, and it does go to the town meeting. There really needs to be a very, very, very good explanation of yeah. how this each project still has to go before like a planning board, the yeah. uh, conservation commission, and before it can keep moving on, just like any other uh, thing. And uh, then also, that's only for that one project. If the town comes up with another project where you have the same situation, less than the, uh, the minimum of 50 feet, you have to uh, also let everybody know that you have to do the same procedure all over again. You gotta be really, really clear about this. Mm -hmm. we, we'll definitely try. Thank you for the advice. All right. Sure. For sure. Thank you, Rocky. Thanks, Rocky. Yeah. <laughs> We appreciate you. you participating every every time. No, thanks. Anybody else? Uh, Jeff is mentally saying the same thing. <laughs> I can see the wheels in Jeff's brain. Uh, it's, been a, <laughs> it's been over four hours here. Yeah, I know. Oh. Okay, now yeah. motion to adjourn. I will second that. Thank you. Um. Okay. David said any further discussion? No. 
No. Hi, Carolyn Ness. Aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Dave Wolfram, aye. Oops. <laughs> Figure out technology one way or the other, right? <laughs> Thank you, Jen. Yeah. You a heroic you, job Dave. tonight. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for really a lot of work. Casey yeah. and Jen. Jen, you were really good. And Jennifer. Yes. I know. Great. Jennifer did a really, yeah. really she is she did an amazing job. Our community yeah. is very and thank lucky everyone for coming and and you know sharing their their views and thoughts. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Bye. Good night, David. Good night, Jen.